Yeah. Someone close the door, please, if possible, back there. Oh, boy, give yourselves a hand for coming out to Funny Moms, everyone! Wow! Yeah. Thank huh? you. This, this bitch keeps growing and growing. Thanks a lot, guys, for coming. Uh, we didn't expect, really, anyone to come. We thought it was holiday week and everyone was out of town, but uh, I guess you guys didn't see your family, so you could see us. So that's pretty chill. Hell yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, How am I doing, did anyone, guys? Did anyone bring their family? <laughs> no one brought their family? Alright. <laughs> why would they? Why not? I mean, why it's bad. Nice. Right? This Jonah's been... dad came and he had a lovely time. So <laughs> yeah, he came. Next this is month. a family-friendly show. The only yeah. person that can't come is Brandon's girlfriend. Yeah. Yes. Now Brandon's coming. Brandon's no, girlfriend. Brandon's, Brandon's coming. girlfriend's coming, but Brandon potentially isn't coming. Brandon Wardell has Brandon. canceled. <laughs> his Brandon set. can suck my tits. I don't give a fuck. About <laughs> He's got a, a skateboard. How am I doing, guys? I'm trying to be a hat guy. Is this too much? Do you guys think? <laughs> I like it. Is it good? I'm. I'm my, my ears are hot. You do you do hats all the time. Well, and then I got a haircut, so so now you look good, dude. Yeah, You're trying to fucking stun on me with that beautiful uh -huh. hair. Thanks. Well, yeah, it was a seventy dollar haircut. It really? Like, yeah, it was the first time I got. Well, does it look like shit? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. Like oh, it? seventy dollars. <laughs> oh, you got ripped off. Um, yeah, I've never paid that much for it. I usually just go to the hair cuttery or super cuts. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Great. <laughs> just get menthol breath on your back, yeah, yeah, on your yeah. neck. Just one time it. I went to hair cuttery and I had a deaf barber. It was a deaf woman. Hell yeah. I'm like, stop, 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 stop. I'm like, I'm like cut it out. She's like, more? So, I don't go anymore. I got a haircut from a Dominican guy that didn't speak English when I first moved to New York. And, but uh, they do good haircuts. That's all Dominicans do is haircuts and baseball. <laughs> Yo, there's the Dominican barbershop in Astoria where they literally have cockfights on TV. <laughs> just, they're, it's like a it's live like, feed of yes, cockfights. ESPN 80. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you subscribe to that? This dude was like taking me through. Producers. He was like, what do you want? And I couldn't tell him because of the language barrier. So he was going through pictures of on his Instagram. It was just all Dominican dudes with like pencil, like chin straps. <laughs> Holy shit, I'm yeah, yeah, dude. And I was just like, no, I don't want that. I, don't, I definitely don't want that one. <laughs> The I, want, flag. I want the pencil haircut. It's where it's just all the way down, but it, they you make your hair look like a cool, like a Lego guy. Yeah. Oh, hell oh yeah, 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 that's cool. I asked Luis Gomez how much it would cost to get him to tattoo a haircut on his head. And he was like, $20 million. So we have to raise $20 million. We could do that. That's not bad. One time I got a haircut, shut up. <laughs> When I yeah, moved, one, I got, time. one time. I got, I got, I got recently, one haircut in your life. I got recently a haircut. I said, four. shut up. I said earlier, shut up and respect my wishes, please. I got a haircut, thank you, uh, when I first moved here. Because uh, I didn't have time to just do the number one all around. You know, I had to look good. And uh, a woman, it was like an older Latino uh, woman, um, whose titties were just on my back the whole time. And she called me... Uh, Papa, not even Poppy, Papa, which felt even more like yeah. erotic. Yeah. And uh, I was hard for like three days straight after that shit. It, it, was awesome. it is erotic. I had to shave your head one time. You remember that? Yeah, we kissed in your bathroom. <laughs> for what? Which one? It was in Baltimore. I had to like shave your head for you. It felt like I was preparing you for death row. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I legitimately don't remember that. You had <laughs> what should have been your last meal. Yeah. And, <laughs> don't even fucking give me that. All right? I'm you know, doing all right. I'm they, doing okay. They to get I got a Vitamix. Of, I'm eating smoothies. <laughs> they had to get rid of uh, Final Meals in Texas because one guy, like, ruined it for everybody. He <laughs> yeah. was like, I want two large KFC buckets. I want uh, Panda Express, everything on the menu. <laughs> you earned, like, a $30,000 meal. And he was like, yeah, I'm not hungry. <laughs> just didn't need it, and they got rid of. How moves. the fuck does that fly? How are they like? Well, this fucking murderer well, just wants forty thousand dollars worth of food. <laughs> here's here's what I do, right? If you're ever on death row in Texas, prior to them taking it away, <laughs> you request as your final meal, you say, "I want to eat an electric chair." Uh -huh. You eat the chair, uh -huh. then they can't fucking kill you. <laughs> so. That's some smart shit. Yeah. It's well, I think the I perfect think. crime. Yeah. It's in the Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> Here's my scam: is you get you get your final meal, and then you you be a snooty Jew about it, and you send it back. <laughs> you, just, you take one bite, you send it back. You keep sending it back. You're there for forty years. Uh, that's how you beat death row. <laughs> that's cool. Right? No, so, have you Jews been on death row? What, you you what, what, 
What could you eat that would make you explode in the electric chair? Um, popcorn? Yeah. You just got a bunch of popcorn. <laughs> 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 So fucking tight. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. that'd be awesome, dude. Yeah. Just eat a bunch of cheese, like a block of fucking cheese, you know, and it melts out of yeah. your fucking nose and shit. Yeah, mm, that's something good. Peso, peso. <laughs> Going back to the haircut thing. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The shampoo chair. Oh, that nah, that's some good Ooh, shit. Oof, my own, dude. Imagine, <laughs> imagine a hair wash getting your dick sucked at I the same time. Literally... Anything better than that? Name one thing better than that. I would literally get my hair shampooed before having sex. I think it's better. <laughs> I don't care if it's, a, if it's an old woman with a forearm tattoo and a cigarette hanging out of her mouth. I will take that fucking shampoo job any day of the week. That shit is incredible. It feels good, dude. It feels, it feels wrong because so your fucking eyes are closed. I have never they can do whatever they want. a half chub. Never? No. I get a half chub, sit, and, and sometimes full chub, every time. I have, like, I have no idea what you're fucking talking about. The shampoo? Yeah, I know, but I don't have an erotic reaction. <laughs> Well, having my hair washed. Well, this is a... It's fucking because you're powerless, dude. Yeah. They want to well, start sucking you off. You can't do anything to stop them. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could literally just stop, but like... Well, now you're I, paying for the fucking Now I do food. feel ripped off by that $70 haircut. <laughs> I didn't know these were options. Yeah, you gotta check. It's very fine print. I'm pretty sure the guy that was cutting my hair was like coming in his pants as he was doing it, though. He like, kept the looking guy? at him. He kept... No, the guy the $70 haircut guy. Yeah, he right kept right. looking at himself in the mirror and like... Posing. <laughs> As he would turn my head and then pose and look at it. To be fair, he was a much more attractive man than myself. So. Really? Yeah. Did well, <laughs> what was what he looked like? A very handsome man. That's very good at Fuck cutting hair. Get descriptive. What are you just gonna keep it like that? No, just a generic, <laughs> handsome, good at haircuts guy. You know, you sort of olive complexion. Olive. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he, he had all his hair. Nice. And he wasn't, you know. Why do we gotta fucking turn into my bit. hair all the time? You know what I mean? Because it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's easy. You know, it's I'm, for being bald. It's I'm not bald. I choose to cut my hair short. Okay? Yeah. This is a choice. I was saying, I stop like because this. he has short hair on the side. Should be like, yo, my hair's short on the sides. It's like I got like the math a little more. Right? Yeah. Just like, like, <laughs> honestly, I just my whole thing is I just can't I just love getting mistaken for Jason Statham yeah, all yeah. the time. Like, I just can't fucking go anywhere with anybody. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, that's, I thought I was losing my hair a couple years ago, and you, it's actually a lot more depressing than you think it would be. No, and no. so I, uh, <laughs> I was there for it. Well, yeah, I went online, and then there's all these like support forums that are like, "There's a lot of handsome bald guys like Bruce Willis or Jason Statham." <laughs> And you click on the next link, and it's like, there's a lot of handsome bald guys, like Bruce Willis or Jason <laughs> Statham. You're like, oh, it's Yo, Billy guys. Zane? Billy Zane, that's But true. he was always wearing fucking wigs. That's, a, that's yeah. bullshit. Well, he, he just checked out early with the hair, and he was like, yeah, you can just go wigs. I'm an actor. I play characters. Yo, what if I just got wigs? No, dude. <laughs> what if I get a rug, dude. Wigs, Get dude. a fucking rug, man. I could get a wig in if I just grew my shit out. You know what I mean? <laughs> Every week, I have, it's like a black lady, just like a different thing going. Yeah. Like, I got... Fucking tight blonde curls. Come on, guys. You should just. <laughs> I'm just fucking. You just look like Shirley Temple. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. Big old lollipop. Hell yeah, dude. You look good. What else? What else could I go with? No, you, yeah, you get the Shirley Temple look, but then you get like one of those little sailor boy outfits. Yeah. That they, dude, this is for good. whatever reason, anytime like you took a picture of your child in like 1910, you're like, put him in that stupid outfit. Yeah. Give him the giant lollipop. In the fucking sailor boy outfit. Yeah, what was that? How is it that there's what a that child? Your... How is it there's a childhood obesity problem now, considering every child back then had the, the world's biggest life? Yeah. <laughs> and like, we have to worry about juvenile diabetes from yeah. the pre-sun. <laughs> Well, the thing and is, that's <laughs> carnival-sized fucking lollipop. <laughs> that was for the year. You took one lick a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're all, uh, yeah, yeah. They were poor back then. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. The Great yeah. Depression doesn't seem that bad if you get one of those fucking lollipops. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm starting to come around on the outfit too. Yeah. yeah one of Are you kidding me? The fucking accessibility in that fucking thing. Yeah. You just fucking kick high as shit. For example, I'm in jeans now, right? Pretty high. If I'm wearing fucking Sailor Boy shorts, I'm, I'm taking your glasses off. Right? No one believes I can kick high. I can kick high. I just want that out there, all right? He can. But we, 
I, we took a slow motion iPhone. Have you posted there. that? I want oh, that yeah. out there. I want that in the streets, dude. That's, I didn't. I, I can't believe it took that long to figure out that's what you do with the slow motion thing <laughs> is throw shit at people's faces. Oh, yeah. And so I threw the lint roller at Stop's face in slow motion. And you get to watch him beautifully avoid it. Completely miss. Yeah. <laughs> and Dave's office. <laughs> I don't see. It. I haven't seen that tape, so there's no proof. You know? <laughs> no one's seen uh, it. That's the fucking Matrix. Film. What did you boys do for the motherfucking holidays? <laughs> I was uh, in New York, dude. Did I did Jewish Christmas. Christmas. I can't remember. No, I was mm-hmm. going, dude. You did Jewish Christmas? Yeah, dude. Uh, Ch- Chinese Chinese food, and it's, uh, deli in the morning. What were you saying? Somebody got mad that, about the Chinese food thing. That was the thing. Someone, the yeah, on Twitter today, there's a guy that's like, uh, "Excuse me, Jews, but you stop bragging about the Chinese food <laughs> on uh, Christmas." <laughs> They're like, "Because I know that you think that it's nice that two disparate social groups that don't participate in Christmas together are uh, eating Chinese food together, but uh, they're serving you. But uh, <laughs> I think he's a, a bitch. Imagine being that guy. <laughs> that guy Imagine being, being that guy waking up Christmas morning with his family. He's like, I have to blog. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get to my blog, mom. <laughs> yes, it's a real career. <laughs> Fucking love it. Is that why you think so many like Jews end up with Asian people? It's a Christmas Day romance. Uh, and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? oh, it's like a meet like, cute. It's like a, it's like the lady in the tramp with low mane. You know I mean? <laughs> Is that how you and your four last Asian girlfriends met, Adam? Is that what it was? <laughs> I don't. I don't want to speculate. <laughs> But all I know is that I am officially pro North Korea. Because the South has not been very kind. To me. Very dishonest. Is that the only place where the South is the good version? Yeah. No, England. England too. What? England, England is England flipped. Is? Like the North oh, yeah. is like the Hicks, and the South is like the uh, posh. Guys. What's north? What's north? Like, it's oi, good, it's good England fact. Thanks. I'm, a, I'm an Anglophile. It's weird that they I'm have an hicks. Anglophile. Yeah. Like a hick that's got a top hat. Yeah. <laughs> nah, dude, they got like those fucking meaty faces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, they have like, chins. Oh, okay. You know what I'm talking about. Big chins. All English people. Oh, like the, the Guy Ritchie bad guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of, okay. Oh, I forgot about that. Like Wayne Rooney. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You guys know Wayne Yeah, Rudy? he's a, uh, 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 scally. That's what, like, a gang, uh, liver pudlian gangster. <laughs> pug. That's good. They look like pugs. That's what it is. They do look like pugs. <laughs> I still Isn't don't funny? believe that any of them are actually very tough at all. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they can kick no, my they ass. they fuck you up, dude. With, uh, the puglies... Yeah, dude. I know, that's not intimidating. It's it's it is funny. I think they are just, but it's it, funny. We're the Wimbly Dindus. We're the Peaky Blinders, and we're very picky, <laughs> and we're very sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, you're not a criminal unless you can rhyme. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's in rhyme yeah. and slang. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. It, I, is, it is funny that they literally stab each other because, like, just two, like, because two Brazilian men yeah. like ran up and down a field. You know what I mean? Like yeah, just yeah, eleven yeah. beautiful brown people <laughs> were playing a fucking game that they can't yeah. do. Well, I was in. Uh... <laughs> Wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'll explain. Uh, they, they fucking murder each other because sexy guys, one sexy oh, group soccer. of guys, is better at fucking kicking a ball into a net oh. than another sexy group of yeah. guys. It's kind of I don't know. It's almost like. There's some kind of like weird power talking about game like dynamics. hooligans. Hooligans, yeah, hooligans. Yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, each other up over there. We're out there for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> we got a new 18 year old Brazilian. He's gorgeous. <laughs> that would be funny if it was we just who's just... cuter. <laughs> and soccer was just. If we don't understand as Americans the rules of soccer and the whole ball in the net thing is nothing, it's just like. Who's cuter running up and down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that is soccer. I don't know. I'm we not... we think like soccer players are like because they're not American that they're like sort of debonair. But like if if you ever see the Chilean national soccer team, everyone has a neck tat. Yeah, <laughs> they have a guy with a Jordan Jumpman neck tat <laughs> as their strike. It's not even the right sport. Yeah, it's, it's the wrong he's one. Playing the wrong sport. I think it'd be good if this guy that just has NASCAR. <laughs> <laughs> I love tennis. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys play any fucking sports? 
Um, baseball. My you played baseball? Everybody plays yeah, baseball. My parents I wanted to put me in the most American sport, and then I just used to put the costume on, the pajamas, <laughs> and then just stand out in the outfield, and my dad, in a South African accent, would yell at me about hustle. Yeah. <laughs> I also don't think that the cup sizes, they actually were the right size for children. Oh, remember, no. I have, you have to stand yeah. in a wide stance, otherwise it would dig into your groin. I got an argument. Are you trying to hold on? Are you humble bragging that you had a big ass little kid? No, dick? no, no. <laughs> yeah, all those fucking little ass cups, right? Yeah, on the contrary, I'm saying my groin wasn't wide enough. I would no. have to walk around. It was cumbersome. Well, yeah, I actually had a really big dick as a child. So, <laughs> it's, well, sure. if your dick is big enough, it protects your balls, and you don't need the cup. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's actually uh, I wrap my balls and I I I, yeah. I tied my dick, dick around, around my balls. balls. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Made a little bow. Yeah. And uh, it's perfect. Yeah. And it was hard the entire I, time. I coiled, Maintain an erection. I coiled my dick around my balls like a dog turd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Adam. I'm like a grower, or I'm I'm a shower, not a grower, which yeah. means that you flaccid, show your dick to people. Flaccid, I'm, a, I'm 11 and a half inches, but hard, I'm 3.5 inches. <laughs> <laughs> Shrinks, but it's so hard. <laughs> really, it's you know, it's it's worth it. Really, I, okay. <laughs> that's all we got on our dicks. Guys. Now we got. Yeah, so that's surprising that that ended so quickly. Yeah. I got more on dicks. I was just going to start a new fresh dick topic. Uh, <laughs> this is the per this is where we're three SWMs on stage talking about our penises. This is the, this is why Trump won. SWM. Yeah. <laughs> oh, straight white men. Yeah, yeah, straight mm -hmm. white men. You think we're totally straight? No. Yeah. <laughs> we're not Stop, 100%. Stop and I kiss each other. We kiss all the time. All the time. The thing is, you just make enough money that you can get a bigger and bigger closet to live in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have a Rock Hudson size. I got my PS4 in there. Yeah, 65 inch TV. I'm never coming out of that closet. Either. Being in a closet seems nice. It seems like Dude, that's what gay dudes are doing. They're gaming and they're closet. <laughs> <laughs> They're on Xbox Live. Dude. It must be sick, man. It's like a clubhouse in there. <laughs> That's what gay is, right? It's gaming. G-A-Y-M-I-N-G. Yeah, got it. A little visual joke for everybody. Just had to spell it out. Mm -hmm. um, geez, what did I want to say dick-wise? I know I missed. Now I lost it, but... Uh... Hmm, that's it. I think that's it. What about wise? New Year's resolutions? You guys do those? Yeah, I have one. What's that? <laughs> Go back to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It should be everyone's. How long have you? What, how long? <laughs> when did you stop? But I feel like resolutions I went to therapy are, like three times. Resolutions are the alternative to therapy. Therapy just what? provides you with more like resolutions. You guys. Well, I just gotta go. Man, I you, you've only been three times. And you I said just want back to therapy. Some goodwill yeah. hunting. You made it seem like you were a chronic therapist. You just yeah, look at this fun. motherfucker. He no, was... I went, I went, and I went on the sliding scale, and because it's like no, I think you mean the Kinsey scale. The Kinsey scale. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's anyway, he's yeah. gay. <laughs> it's true, but um, it's not funny because you're making fun of a real gay guy. But um, <laughs> uh, it's not ironic. It's it's just uh, it's hateful. Um, is Kinsey anyway. gay? Kinsey. Yeah. Kinsey. Kinsey fucked. The movie. Kinsey fucked a lot. Or read the book, or know who Kinsey is. So. Uh, I think he said that every guy wants to. Would, Was wants Kinsey to his eat. first name? Because then I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> Kinsey is a super yeah. gay name. Hi, I'm Kinsey. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be your it's, personal trainer. It's short for me, Kinsey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wait, yeah. so he was a gay guy in like the, no, I think like the 60s or 50s? He like? wasn't gay. No. I think he just fucked a lot. Or something. Yeah. And he, I don't know. Why? Stop, he'd be pretty sad stop, 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 Kinsey stop. was a guy who fucked, right? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> Kinsey had this fucking beautiful hog. You know what I mean? Gorgeous. He, yeah. he the actually, original Kinsey scale was just inches. Yeah. <laughs> and he invented it to brag. Yeah, well, not, he, he, he hated fucking, Kinsey, actually. Yeah. It's actually ironic, but his dick was so beautiful and good at fucking that he had to fuck every type of person and rate them. By how good they were at fucking. That's like a Greek mythology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is just my or my family's origin story. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Your dad turned into a, a goose and, then, yeah. and yeah, fucked a I slave. Love, I love how much. <laughs> I love how much they just fucked as animals. Half diabetic. What's that? I love how much like gods. Don't give him a diabetes thing. It wasn't a joke. He just called me diabetic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, non-ironic, <laughs> real harassment. <laughs> 
I love the Greek gods. Their tricky way of fucking humans was just to be like bulls and fucking like my fucking yeah. god wife won't figure this out. I'll just yeah. be a bull. Well, I like the idea that people are like, uh, no, I'm not gonna have sex with a actual immortal god. That'd be weird. A dog, however, yeah. a sneaky dog yeah. with beautiful eyes. Yeah. Now you're you're barking up the right tree. Yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, I fuck my dog. Stop. <laughs> She's beautiful. I pay, post pics all the time. Yeah. She's going to be a different type of rescue when you're done with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the worst no, dog Adam life would get had. pegged by his dog, dude. He yeah, wouldn't probably. even fuck his dog. <laughs> why? I don't mean why. Your dog is so much more alpha than you no. do. I'm a, I'm a master. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a BDSM type of thing. I also, no, you got masters, you got mistresses, you got subs. So yeah, sub and dom. D dom. Well, the dog is the sub. The dog is... Would it be, you go around the dog park explaining the situation? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's a sub. You really have to dom your animal. Right? <laughs> That's why I got this leather leash. There are a lot of leather. That's why I make her wear that now. I make her yeah. wear a, a muzzle now. She looks like Bane. And it's, it's because of his bedroom. It's a bedroom thing. <laughs> All right, that's enough about me and fucking my dog. Yeah. Why did you get that thing, the, the Hannibal Lecter? Thing? Because she could kill a dog. She really could, and there's this bitch dog that lives across the hall from me, this little fucking Ewok motherfucker. <laughs> I just see him walking around, and he, and she, he barks like crazy. Yeah, what is I... it with small dogs? They all have that, like, Joe Pesci thing. They're yeah. all yeah. Joe Pesci. They're like, you fucking talking to me, motherfucker? <laughs> I'll fuck you up, motherfucker. <laughs> You're like three pounds. Yeah. They're all like Joe Pesci in Casino beating the guy yeah, with yeah, a yeah. phone. Uh -huh. That's like what all small dogs are. And they saw each other on the street, and she lunged, and... Uh, she could have killed that dog. And then this, my roommate was there, and he was, like, confused about what to do. And this, like, old, like, magical guy appeared out of nowhere. He's like, if you want to get him to stop fighting, put a, put a stick in their ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, just, like, Bagger Vance showed up out of nowhere. <laughs> The bagger man's of bestiality. <laughs> I mean, but really, if you're trying if to get any animal to stop fighting, including humans, yeah. just put a stick in a their stick ass. Or anything oh, yeah. in their ass. And why is yeah. jail so violent, then, if that works? Why is jail so That's violent? how it started. They had to break up fights by ass oh, fucking. Yeah. Okay. And then they were like, you know, the ass fucking's not bad on its own. Do we talk about. <laughs> Have you seen Oz, man? Oz right. sucks. Yeah, we talk about. I don't know if this would be funny or not, but I watched uh, 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 Silence of the Lambs again. And they yeah, got yeah. that scene where they go to the prison <laughs> and they meet, they meet Hannibal Lecter, and he's got this, like, first of all, he's been eating people, and they still let him have that very nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's got like a with like a globe from like all all, all good things. Leather yeah. kind of like <laughs> twenty thousand dollar globe. Well, he talks in antiques. an English accent. Well, yeah, so she meets I mean. him and he's like, "I'm the smartest man in the world for me." Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then she's like, "All right, goodbye, Doctor Lecter," and she leaves. And then the guy in the cell right next to him just throws cum in her face. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, what part of the jail is that? Yeah. <laughs> What you, what, it has this very nice cell, and then the cum guy right next to the actor, and then the Joker, and then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, that ought to do it. A nice cum riff to end our opening segment. Oh, yeah. Let, uh, buy a shirt, too. I, I've pitched this a couple times, guys. Uh, I said, as I said before, a lot of cool teenagers have come up to me on the train and said, Where did you get this? And I said, I got it from. Uh, from Barney's, New York. <laughs> but really, I just That's had... Just, I had a very nice man in uh, Williamsburg make them for me, and, uh, you know, I owe him a lot of money, so... <laughs> <laughs> nice, right, the old cool. guilt pitch. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you go bankrupt, dude. I'm broke already. <laughs> Student money. So yeah, just buy that illegally screen printed Michael Jordan thing. That's a set, That's just a much that's cheaper fair use, Jordan dude. shirt. That's fair use. Just tape it over, it. just put white out over the baby, and you just have a very cheap Jordan shirt yeah, also. It's so cool. He's giving like birth and or dunking over a baby. <laughs> it's cool. It's, it's multiple interpretations. That's what art is all about. <laughs> all right, guys. Let's all right. get this going. Well, that's our time, guys, huh? Thank yeah, you. come on. <laughs> we got a killer show. We got an awesome show for you. Um, our first comic's one of my favorites. One of our favorites. Uh, he's super funny. He was on Conan. 
Uh, he's got a beautiful little baby boy. Uh, please, big round of applause. I don't know why I said that, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I just could have stopped with the credit, but it's, he's, I probably ruined a joke now. Fuck, I'm sorry, Doug. Um, guys, please give it up. Please also clap louder, because I feel bad, huh? Everybody, big round of applause for my buddy, Doug Smith! I'm gonna use this dog fucker mic here. That pedophile mic is bad news. Savros is gonna abduct my child while I'm on stage. Gonna use time to his advantage. Give it up for the haircut boys, everybody. Come on. Yeah. I, um, as you can tell, I haven't gotten a haircut in quite a while. I go to those, uh, I go to those like $15 places run by Eastern Europeans where it's like you get a Russian ex-con trying to use a straight razor for good for once, you know? And they just like, they shave your sideburns off without asking you first, you know? They're like, how do you like the sideburns? Is they're shaving them off. Just make you look like a NASCAR fan with one fell swoop of the clipper, you know? The last time I went, I just, uh, I got lazy. I was like, I was like up for anything. I was like, hey man, just do what you want. I'm up for whatever. And he gave me one of these fucking Macklemore's which just totally bald on the side with that pompadour on the top. And as I'm sitting there, I was like, I think I can pull this off. I think, I think this is okay. And then as I was walking home, I kept like looking at my reflection in car windows. I was like, I cannot pull this off. And then I walked in the door and my wife just goes, what the fuck happened to you? And my kid wouldn't even let me hold him. So then I got in the bathtub with my, with my beard trimmer and just tried to shave off the top of my head and then the beard trimmer just like shorted out halfway through. So I looked like I insa uh, escaped an insane asylum. And then I was too embarrassed to go back to that barber to have him fix it. So I went to a different barber and paid another 30 bucks to have them fucking shave my head. So spend that 70 bucks. The moral of the story. That's, that's what you gotta do. Uh, we got a mostly local crowd here. Clap it up if you live in the city. Yeah? All right, cool. I, uh, I've been living in New York for a while now, and I realized the other day, I feel like New York has turned me into a total peeping Tom. Um, let me explain. First of all, I look the part, so I might as well just be that guy, you know? If you look down in your fire escape and saw me there, you'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. There he is in his natural habitat. But uh, the other day, I'm in my living room. I look across the street through the window, two gorgeous naked women making out with each other. And uh, they were on an equally naked man's television screen, but that's neither here nor there. Just, uh, crop him right out, no problem. I feel like that's the only way to watch porn when you share a computer with your wife, right? It's just through other people's windows. Like, would you look at this guy? Look at this guy. I'm gonna keep looking at this guy. And uh, I don't know who should have been more ashamed, him for not drawing the blinds or me for pulling up a chair. You know? Probably me, because when he finally changed the channel, I just kept sitting there watching Shark Tank. Uh, it's good, I haven't seen this one. I just found this out. They just uh, they just decriminalized public urination here. Do you guys know this? There we go. I was I was way too excited to find this out personally. This was, this was like my gay marriage. And I was like, finally, these politicians are giving me the rights I deserve. I didn't choose to be this way. I was born the love of pissing by moonlight. I've been doing it for years anyway, but now I don't have to go hands-free while pretending to pop the trunk of a car that's not mine, so. <laughs> Pretty exciting stuff. That's how you do it, by the way, just. <laughs> get lessons. Um, I, uh, I joined a gym recently, and I'm not even working out so much. My favorite thing to do with the gym is just sit in the locker room and watch old men use the hand dryer on their balls. <laughs> You guys aware of this phenomenon? It's great. Like the, and the shorter the guy, the funny it is. They just have to stretch it all the way up there. Just look like they're trying to shake out the wrinkles on a fitted sheet, you know? Maybe you realize I'm not drying my balls enough, but I guess, well, I guess when you're that old and your balls are that long, you've got to dry them really well or they get like a moldy shower curtain. I don't really know. That's what I've been doing for fun recently, guys. Um, I, uh, my internet went out the other day and so I had to call Time Warner to deal with that whole fiasco, right? I spent 10 minutes on the phone yelling at this Time Warner customer service guy who can't find my account information. And then I was like, oh shit, I have Verizon. <laughs> so, I felt so bad I almost switched to Time Warner. I was like, dude, I'm so sorry. What can I do? This guy was not, could not have been cooler about it. He was like, it's, cool. it's okay, man. It's cool. I profusely apologized. I got off the phone with him. I was like, man, that guy was so cool. Why was he so cool? And I was like, well, I 
did repeat my home address half a dozen times. He can just come kill me in my sleep whenever he wants to. He's gonna wake up with a pill over my face. Like, How's your connection now, motherfucker? You know? <laughs> I think at the very least, I think he's gonna change up his phone greeting. You know, I think from now on he's gonna be like, hello, thank you for calling Time Warner. Do you have an account with us or are you a burnout who needs a minute? That's a thought. I do have a, I do have a baby boy, uh, despite the, the spoiler alert. Um, I, uh, I am, so I'm trying to smoke less weed. I just, I feel like it would be terrible to like be super high and witness some sort of accident. You know, like he sticks a fork in the electrical outlet. I'm just like, look at his hair, you know. <laughs> Falls down a flight of stairs, like, whoa, human slinky. You know, nobody needs that, dad. Um, Plus, I like weed makes me sleepy. I'm so tired as is already. Like uh, the sleep deprivation is unreal. I have a friend who has two kids. On his way home from work every day, he pulls his car in the parking lot of a Walmart, reclines his seat, and just sleeps for an hour. And I used to think that is the saddest thing I've ever heard. And now I'm like, that lucky son of a bitch has a car to sleep in. I gotta settle for a train or a park bench like a fucking hobo. I used to think New York City was full of junkies and bums, and I'm like, oh, it's just a bunch of new dads looking for a place to crash out. You know? <laughs> I totally get it now. Uh, but my, yeah, my son just turned one. That's a tough age, because like one-year-olds, that's just like they're like a constant danger to themselves, constantly like fishing stuff out of his mouth, slapping sharp objects out of his hand. I don't feel like a dad as much as like a, a guard in charge of a suicidal prison inmate. <laughs> you know, every night before lights out, I gotta give him a full pat down, check for contraband. What is that, a razor blade under your tongue? Get the fuck out of here. Like, I think if he were to go to trial, he would totally get off on an insanity plea. And I'd be like, we don't have a case this guy, against this guy. Never mind the mess in his pants. He's got rocks in his mouth and he's clapping about it. He's off his fucking rocker. We live in, a, we live in an old pre-war building in Park Slope. Just found out that our apartment has astronomically high levels of lead. <laughs> So, that's bad news. It's one thing for your kid to eat those healthy paint chips, but those lead chips are bad news, right? I read this article, and it said that lead is not dangerous unless your child is actively eating paint chips. It's like, what child is actively... They make it sound like he's got a handful of cashews watching some football game, right? They're pretty good. So, I don't want him eating one paint chip, so now every time he bends down, picks something up off the ground, bring it to his mouth, I'm diving across the room, slap it out of his hand. So if he doesn't have lead poisoning, he will definitely have an eating disorder. <laughs> Every time it's just a stray Cheerio. He's like, what the fuck? Come on. <laughs> I'm just, uh, I'm praying my son isn't, doesn't turn into one of those nosebleed kids. You guys know what I mean by this? That was a, no, that was a knowing laugh. Are you the, were you the nosebleed kid? Were you really? Did you still get him? Oh, look at the freak, guys. Look at the freak. <laughs> That sucks, man. That's, that's, a, that's a tough lot in life. My best friend growing up was one of these kids where like, we'd be standing there waiting for the school bus. He'd bend down to tie his shoe, stand up looking like he just lost a UFC fight. You know? I always try to use it to my advantage. Like We'd get on the school bus and be like, don't make me fucking tell you again. You know? But he ruined so much furniture, my mom wouldn't even let him in the house. She'd treat him like a dog that's just rolled in shit. You know, she'd like, keep him in the garage so you get him hosed off. <laughs> he can be your outdoor friend. He's not coming inside. It's weird growing up with an indoor cat and an outdoor friend. But, uh, but it always made me feel super tough. Like one time we're eight years old. We're jumping on the bed having a pillow fight. He gets a full gusher before I even hit him. And I was like, you lose, you pussy. My dad pops his head and he's like, you're both pussies. You're having a pillow fight like sorority girls. <laughs> And I couldn't even claim a victory in that fight because that's the fight I found out I was allergic to goose down. <laughs> I swelled shut, broke out in hives, and uh, you cannot give your friend shit about his nosebleeds when you're kryptonite his feathers. <laughs> Had to get rushed to the emergency room. Never seen my dad more embarrassed in his life. Doctor comes in, he's like, what happened to him? He's like, he was in a fight. What kind of fight? I don't see how that's important. <laughs> concern you. But I feel like it's every dad's worst nightmare for their son to just be like a total sissy, you know? And I don't mean gay, I just mean like weak. Like my son, my son can wear high heels to school as long as he doesn't plug his ears when a fire truck goes by. You know? <laughs> he can kiss every boy on the playground, but if he holds his nose and he jumps in a pool, I'm punching holes, <laughs> punching holes in his floaties, you know? <laughs> yeah, you gotta draw the line somewhere. Uh, but I've been asking my dad for a lot of parenting advice recently, which is, hasn't been going so well. He told me when he was 10 years old, his mom caught him smoking a cigarette. She did that thing where she made him smoke the entire pack right there in front of her. And from that day forward, he was addicted to nicotine. 
punishment that keeps on giving right there. Huh? 50 years later, you got a spot on your lung. You're like, oh boy, my mom really showed me. Be good. But I was a really kid, gro good, good kid growing up. I never, uh, never got caught smoking or fighting or anything. I did get caught stealing a candy bar once, and the shame of getting caught doing that when you're 30 years old is all the punishment you need. Right? <laughs> this, was, uh, this was just a few years ago. I was like wasted, double vision drunk. I stumble into a bodega to buy a vitamin water. Guy charges me three bucks. That's a little steep, right? Usually they're two. So like I could have just paid it. I could have walked out, but I was like, no, fuck this. I'm gonna even this score when this guy's back is turned. Slip a candy bar in my pocket, right? So the second he turns his back, I'm just standing there swaying back and forth, trying to stuff a king size Snickers bar in the breast pocket that isn't there. And after my third miss, he just spins around and he just goes, seriously? Which, that's like the bodega guy equivalent of I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed, right? <laughs> so I went, I'm not stealing, I'm gonna buy this, and it? And I just start piling candy bars on top of the counter so he doesn't get mad at me. So my attempt at a $1 theft wound up costing me $11. So, imagine if I try to rob a bank, run out of the getaway car, the guy's like, where's the cash? I'm like, I panicked and made a deposit. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um... There was some dog talk. I have two dogs as well. Any dog owners in here? Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, Boston Terrier. Boston Terrier. That's a that's a that's a passable dog. <laughs> what else we got? <laughs> no. I mean, I can't give you shit, dude. We have we have two Chihuahuas. Yeah. That uh, I pray for their demise every day. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. They're they're um. Chihuahuas that my wife got before we got together, and she loves these things. She thinks of them as her kids as much as our son. I'm like the stepdad. I'm like you'll never be part of my home, you know. <laughs> but uh, I can't think of them as kids because they're both 15 years old now. One of them is deaf and blind. The other has no teeth and a bad back. <laughs> they both shiver under a blanket all day. They're grandparents, right? Except except when they die, they don't leave any money behind. Just a body that's not quite small enough to flush. You know? <laughs> I'll still try. Be like, come on, get down there, goddammit. They're terrible, though. They, they, you know, they bark, they bite, they're mean. Um, the toothless one, especially, he doesn't realize that his gums are useless. So every time he clamps down on my hand, he just gets this confused look like he just unloaded a full clip on the Terminator. You know, he's like, ah, what are you? He doesn't get it. And since he can't chew anything, he just swallows all his food whole. So, like, I dropped a hot dog on the ground the other day. I was like, no way he's gonna go for that. Sure enough, he just starts deep throating this thing like a gay porn star. But he's a good actor because like his eyes were watering, and he was gagging, but he's definitely like he was enjoying it. It's real, real sick son of a bitch. That one. I was at a I was at a buddy's pool over Labor Day weekend, and at one point I dove too deep. I smashed my head on the bottom of the pool, and I'm fine. But that night, my wife goes, "Oh my God, thank God you're okay." The moment that happened. I was so worried you were gonna be confined to a wheelchair and have to use a dildo on me. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I was worried about the wheelchair too. <laughs> Gotta tell you, dildo usage was definitely at the back of my scrambled brain, but nice to know even in times of potential paralysis, you find a way to make it about yourself, right? I just imagine my lifeless body floating in the surface. She's like, oh boy, this Son of a bitch, better still have use of his arms, you know? <laughs> the doctor, the doctor's like, Mrs. Smith, I'm so sorry your husband is paralyzed from the neck down. She's like, does that mean he use his neck? If I strap a dildo to his forehead, can he not his head back and forth? Or can I shake him by the hair? What's the deal here? All right, that's a, that's a, that's a weird one. Uh, you guys have been, uh, you guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Good night. <laughs> Doug Smith, everybody. Huh? His wife fucks. His wife loves to fuck. Uh, <laughs> All right, guys. We're gonna, we've got a great show. Uh, another great comic. One of my favorites. She's hilarious. Please, big round of applause for Lisa Traeger, everybody. How is everyone? Christmas. All right. <laughs> I feel good. Um... You can uncross your arms and maybe not be so smug for a second. Um, I know you fix computers for a living, but chill the fuck out. Um, all this weird body language. I mean, you look West Side Story, so you can still be sexy like that. You know what I mean? There's a gold chain and done up eyebrows, so you can have any body language you want, you know? 
threatening. Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, cheers for sure. Um, except mostly weed. Uh, mostly just joints nonstop. Thank you so much for that. Also, if you're in love, hold hands, you know, right? A foot touch? You don't have to. Not a foot. I meant like a thigh grab. I just... Looking at couples that don't hold hands, it's kind of like looking at a thin person that doesn't dress well. You know, it's like, you don't deserve it. But... <laughs> sure. <laughs> Keep having joy. Um, <laughs> you giant New Balance sneaker. Um... I'm in this thing, I don't know if, I don't know if I'm in pain because of my period or because I ate a Philly cheesesteak sandwich at 10 a.m. So that's like my inner struggle. Um, my outer struggle, I don't know if anyone relates to this, but when you're sitting somewhere and you're just like, did I just get my period? Or did I just get super wet at Panera? Um, <laughs> fuck, you know? Because then like, you thought you needed a tampon, but a broccoli cheddar bread bowl was just fine, you know? <laughs> Like, hello. Um, I was not eating bread for a little bit, but then no one gave me enough attention, so I stopped. You know what I mean? Like, did you not just see me not take the free bread and butter at the table? None of you have anything to say. Okay, well, go fuck yourselves, you know? Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to give a speech or have some confetti um, or something, but I'm a good person. I wanted to, I, I'm assuming a lot of Jews out. Yeah, the Jews are out. Um, did any of you Jews go to Birthright? Yeah. You're a Jew? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's weird. Are you sure? Yes. Is that a pink sweatshirt? You're the first Jew with that much confidence, so congratulations. Um, the other Jews don't like that, but they know. Uh, anyways, you went on Birthright or you didn't? Yeah. Did you hook up? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, so I'm assuming all the other Jews. So basically, if you're, if you're not in the know, if you're a young, fun Jew, you get a free 10-day trip to Israel. It's called Birthright. It's basically a brainwashing trip. You know, day seven, I called my mom and told her I was gonna join the army there. Now, um, I don't know if you can tell what my vibe is, but it's definitely not an IDF soldier. Um, <laughs> but like, it's an incredible trip, right? Um, and then they also want you to marry a Jew. So we would sit in a circle and we would talk about how important it was to marry a Jew. And then they would give us alcohol, put us on a party boat and go, everyone's Jewish. And then they would just leave us. Now, I don't know what you were doing between the ages of 18 and 24, but we were fucking, okay? So then we would be fucking at night and then it would be like suddenly you're, it's the morning and you're at the Holocaust Museum and there's still dried cum on your chest and you're like, well, this is the worst. Uh, <sighs> I mean, not the worst. There's evidence of that all over the museum. Um, is that a loose braid, you know? Um, so the worst isn't the right word. I guess the right word would be like uncomfortable. It's just weird because you're looking at pictures of your people dying and then six million Jews died right on your tits and you're like, well... Fuck, you know? I might come, Hitler. Um, like, I guess I could never forget this mediocre night. Um, <laughs> and then you're just like scratching off like CPAs onto the ground and lawyers, you know, you're like, oh, Joshua, you could have been great. Uh, you could have been so successful. Um, calm down. Okay, so <laughs> yeah, that was an off-color joke, but I'm a pretty good person. Um, <laughs> I am. I have exactly, like, I guess the best thing I did was when I waitressed and girls would order salads, I would always put two french fries on the side of their plate. That's nice, you know? Because um, I just knew what they wanted, and not just one to tease them, but a second to get a last bite, so it's not a tomato, so that's pretty nice. Um, I'm also a pretty good listener, I think. I don't know, except when I'm blacked out, um, and then it causes problems because... Friends will talk to me, and then in the morning, I'm like, I guess I remember Marty was molested, but not by who, and I don't know if I can casually ask that at brunch, you know what I mean? Just like, I remember your mom was a cunt, but was it your uncle? Um, that might be a personal thing. Uh, maybe you guys don't know Marty, but someone did something to him. Um, <laughs> no, actually, my grandparents met in the concentration camps, which is pretty nuts, but it's true. My mom was born June 9th, 1945, right after the war. Um, so they met, her parents met in a concentration camp. And nowadays I'm just like, hmm, Tinder's the worst, you know? <laughs> uh, but damn, Grandpa, you know? <laughs> he had a lot of game. Okay. Um, 
Um, I get on Tinder, but only when it's like last, I just like, usually it's on vacation. Um, I'm a Tinder vacay user. So like, I'll, like I was in London this summer. That was, that was the last time I probably went on Tinder. It was a great trip. I love it. Long. I loved it there. Like, I just love the accents. I just love an accent where you could tell there's going to be foreskin. You know, it's nice. It's just like a little voice with a clue. I've always wanted to solve crime. And so it was fun being in London. And I went on Tinder and met this hot guy. And then I was in an Uber to his house immediately. And then in the Uber, it hits me like, yeah, I want to fuck, but uh-oh, murder. And so then you're just like sitting in the car kind of like, you know, how much is your life worth? You know, like, <laughs> you don't want to die, but he does have a beard, a hat, and a smile. So you're like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's, so it's like, uh, it's weird. But we all do weird things to get fucked, everyone. Everyone does creepy shit to get laid, right? Like, no one likes to hear an acoustic guitar, but you listen, you know what I mean? Like, whatever. <laughs> No, that sounds really good. You're great at that. No, Wonderwall is such a good pick. Uh, just like original and great. You're from Cincinnati. Very interesting. Um, chili. Wow, there's a chili place. You know, we're fucking desperate. Um, so I knew I was going to go to his apartment, but what I did to protect myself was I sent his address and a photo of his face to all of my friends. And then um, when I got to his house, he offered me a drink. I made him drink from it first. And then like the whole time we were hooking up, I was just making sure to get DNA under my fingernails, you know, just in case. Just He was like, damn, you're kinky. I'm like, oh no, if you murder me, there will be justice. <laughs> all your skin cells, you know? I was just walking around the apartment, just dropping hair everywhere, just little pieces everywhere. Oh, is this your toaster? Fingerprints, every doorknob. Can I borrow your nail clippers? Yeah, I'm gonna lick this glass, you know? Uh, just leaving traces everywhere. But it was a good time. He was good at sex, that's rare, but it was good. It was a fun time, because I like to get hit during sex. Um, which most people, I think, do. For me, I think it's because I played um, football on an all-boys team when I was really young, and that fucked me up. Because I was... <laughs> Because I was in eighth grade and I was like, I joined the all boys football team and then everyone hated me and beat the shit out of me and then they would get stickers on their helmets and stuff. So it fucked me up. And it explains why I like to get hit during sex and it also explains why after sex I demand fruit snacks and Gatorade. So full circle. <laughs> but at least I know I did a good job when someone takes me to the Dairy Queen. I'm like, I guess I killed that one. Um, I did great, sprinkles. Yeah, I also watched Oz too young, too. While my friends were like, did you watch MTV's Undressed? I'm like, full anal rape at 12. Um, <laughs> just Christopher Maloney and the Mayhem guy. Fucking. Um, gray walls. So now my dream sex looks like a Renaissance painting of hell, you know? Uh, just a lot of reaching. But um, I've, uh, I've been thinking a lot about things, um, you know, with all the time alone. Um, but... I, I don't know. I've been th I've I'm trying to figure something out. Um, I kind of have a hypothesis. It's not fully formed or anything, but I like to do experiments and like gather proof and evidence for I don't know ideas I have. I think it's because I majored in sociology. I don't know if there are other receptionists here tonight, but like um, <laughs> you might relate to that feeling. But it's just inside of us, you know, answering phones and helping the poor. Um, but sorry, that last one shouldn't have done that. Okay, are there just um, like. So we'll see if this is funny or not, but if not, you know, the, there will be a Holocaust joke, one more, you know? Um, I get the vibe of the room. You'll get what you want. Um, so I just need like two bro straight guy friends. Just two guy friends? Are there good best guy friends? Yeah. Okay. These two? You want to play? You guys? With your friendly attitude? So, um, so you guys are good friends. Okay. Well, with male friendship, that probably means like you've made eye contact three times, you know? Um, and now he'll be in your wedding. So, so you guys are like bros. You're single guys? Yeah. Okay, so let's say you, you go out and then you get fucked. So you got laid last night and then he tells you the next day like, hey, best friend, I got fucked last night. What's your first question that you would ask him? Did you come? <laughs> That's a joke? That's a joke? Oh, okay. Oh, that's interesting, because that's definitely the first question I ask all the time to all my friends. 
that's a lie though. First I ask, are you sure you wanted it? But then, um, but I know you're all a room of good guys. I'm sure you're fine. You know, for all the times women have been raped, it's astonishing how many good guys there are. Um, maybe if you spent less time uh, <laughs> explaining how you're a good guy, there'd be less of that. But I know the articles have been mean. We will give you time to, <laughs> I don't even know the word. Um, the only word I kept thinking about was remorse. I'm like, I don't even know if they know what that means. But, um, so you would never ask if he came? No. What would be your first question? I guess, was it good? I, mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we never had that conversation. Oh, you've never had good no. friends, though. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know what men friends do. I accept we'll get other things together. Um, <laughs> I truly don't understand. <laughs> um, that's crazy. But you would have just assumed that he came? Yeah, yeah. You would just, like, you would know that he came. You always come. You fuck, you're always coming. Yeah. Always coming. Are there girls in here that come every time they get fucked? Boo. Boo. <laughs> okay. So the next time at men as a group, you're like, well, feminists hate men. You now have an idea why, right? We have like a little understanding that you're constantly coming and we're not, and you're still assholes. You know what I mean? You're still so mean. Like, you're coming, men come so much that you guys are inventing new places to come constantly. Like that's how much men are coming. You're just ruining socks, blankets, t-shirts, rags. I mean, you're constantly, you're, you're coming so much that like you're, like I saw, I was watching porn and a girl just started opening up her eyeballs. Like that's how, that's how much you've all collectively come that now girls are opening their eyeballs so you have a fun new place to come. While we're just like, uh, not. I mean, <laughs> it's so crazy. Would you ever ask if he made her come? Yeah. You would? I mean, I don't know if you, yeah, I don't know if you know, but... I, I you don't know if you know, yeah. <laughs> no, it's our fault. I mean, that's for sure. It's our fault. For, absolutely. We have to be meaner. I mean, we need to start treating men the way they've treated us. They, are, they should be nervous. You know what I mean? Like, we should, we're just going to start treating you the way you treat us. It's going to be amazing. You know what I mean? Unless you have a reason why, men, why we shouldn't hate men. Oh, are you quiet for once in your lives? Oh, my God. Are you sure you don't have unsolicited advice to give me? No, I mean, you're coming so much. Not only are you coming all the time and we're kind of fine with it and we're not coming, we're just, it's really a nightmare that we just don't, like, that's how terrible our lives are that we're just like fine with you coming on a body part and us not coming. Like, that's how the world has laid out. And then you're like, well, women should, we're, you guys are the worst. You know what I mean? Like, you're the actual worst. Well, you're, yeah, I mean, it's so wild. Your lives are so good. You know when you're like, why are women crazy and emotional? Cause we're not coming, you know what I mean? Like, if we, you, if you made us come more, maybe we would be more friendly to you. But it seems, I don't know, we're so nice to you guys. Women aren't even mean to men with tiny dicks. What a world, like what a, what a world you guys live in. Your lives are that good that women aren't even mean to men with tiny dicks. We see a tiny dick and we're like, not the size of the boat, it's the motion of the ocean. Like, we break into poetry so you don't feel bad about your tiny dick. Like, that's what the world is. And guess who's gonna come? Your tiny dick, you know what I mean? Your tiny dick that we're nice to is still gonna come and it's just crazy. We're just like, short and stubby, make a great hobby. Like, what happened to us? that we are not coming and then being nice to their hidden dicks and weird body hair patches. Like, it's just confusing to me. And I think it's, I think women used to be meaner to men with tiny dicks, I truly believe that. But then once Henry VIII chopped off that last wife's head, we were like, oh yeah, no, size doesn't matter. Yeah, no, that's such a good dick, it's perfect. No, it's perfect, it's great. No, I love sports. And that's what happened. You guys just kept chopping our heads off, calling us witches and burning us. And now we pretend you're interesting. And now we've just not come for so long that your time is done. I mean, we'll see. There should be a you know, thing. But it's not their fault. It's our fault. We got to be meaner to them. We just care too much about what they think. We're just like, oh, they might think we're this or that. Fuck them. They're weird. 
I like when they're like, women dress for women. Yeah, no, we're gonna dress for you. I mean, are you out of your minds? You know what I mean? It's just crazy. But it's our fault. Our lives, we just let things happen. Like we want equal pay, but we also still keep peeing on public toilet seats. You know what I mean? It's our fault too. The men aren't pissing on our toilet seats, we are, in record numbers. You know what I mean? Every time I'm like equal pay, I just think about the times I wipe strangers piss off. You know what I mean? Just the 30 to 50% of my life that I spend wrapping toilet paper around my hand and then wiping strange women's piss off toilet seats and then I go, I guess we don't deserve it all. You know what I mean? It's like, we can't figure out. Like, it's upsetting, so we're not coming. And then every time we go to the bathroom, it's just like this new demeaning adventure. You know, it's like, you know, you go to the first stall, there's pee on the seat. You're like, I believe in myself. So you go to the next stall, and then there's pee on that seat. And now you're debating which stranger's piss you would rather be touching. And now, and then you're like, okay, this one has more, this one has less, but there's two loose hairs. Okay. And then door number three, full clean bathroom, but a loose tamp in the corner and so then you're just like pea speckles loose hairs and then you know it's just like and then you're like oh the pea's just on the back of the toilet seat I'll sit in the front I'll work on my posture but also how did it get there so now you're just like analyzing pea things while men are building bridges and coming you know what I mean and, and we're just looking at toilet I mean ugh. and my friends are like you're a dumb bitch you need to hover and it's like I'm tired. Um, <laughs> I'd like to sit down, and I've peed in the back of my overalls twice. Um, but also, I'm tired. I want to be on Instagram. I want to sit while I pee. What a diva. You know? All right. You guys, I had so much fun. Enjoy the rest of your... Uh, hey, hey, how about a hand for Lisa? How funny is she? Please. I don't know about all this be meaner to little dick guys business. You know what I mean? I don't know about that. If I can follow you up on that one, Lisa. Um, I think they're kind of a persecuted minority in this country. And um, now I'm not speaking for anybody specifically, but I'm just saying it's kind of rude. If <clears throat> Anyway, um, I, don't, I don't always come. I'm nervous sometimes. I don't need to be more nervous. I don't like that bit, honestly, but... I guess it's working. That's what feminism is. It should make weak men scared. That's what... And uh, I am one of those, so perfect. I'm very intimidated. Jeez. Uh, uh, I... <laughs> God, m being more nervous during sex? I don't know, guys. Uh, fuck. I try and make them... I've got a pretty high cum rate, honestly. I don't know why I feel like I'm like on trial because of that. That just goes to show you how bad I am at fucking. She was not talking to me specifically, but I'm like, I actually, point by point, uh, I am not the problem. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. My pussy eating game has fallen off, I will be honest. Um, it's not for a want... You know, lack of... It's lack of practice, you know? Um, just really, I hooked up with a... Fr uh, I went back home and I like hooked up with my ex-girlfriend, just cause you know, it was like a holidays, you know, like you hit the snooze button on life and you're just like, this'll be fine. Uh, we're both lonely. Um, and I just hadn't eaten pussy. I mean, my jaw was just, my jaw dexterity was gone. You know what I mean? I'm just in there like, you know, you gotta do that move at the end when the tongue's done and you gotta fucking you just do whatever just to not break the fucking your rhythm. <sighs> it was tough guys. It was really tough. I gotta get in there somehow. I don't know. What's like, a, you know like in high school they have the tackling dummy? I need a pussy eating dummy where I'm just like, ah, uh, just move, I move it across the room by force of pussy eating alone. That's what I need. If anybody's an engineer in here, please get that going. Um, <laughs> it was funny too though, because I was like, I, is, is there, do, you, do we have an engineer? Huh? No? No one? No one, anybody here? Like have an impressive job, any of our fans? No, right? You're all piece of shit. <laughs> Why would you listen to it? <laughs> Why just a cum town otherwise? Um, no one's got it together that fucking listens to our show, but um, I don't know. I hooked up with my ex, you know, and it was funny. Uh, it's funny when you hook up with somebody you used to hook up with and they just have so many new moves. And you're just like, oh man, you have been fucking so much more than me. How does your thumb even moving that way? What's the bend? But... I don't know. It was tough. I really was not feeling good about it. But uh, 
No, I didn't really like anybody have a good holiday otherwise. I mean, it was cool to come. I did come both times. I will admit, I don't know why I'm back to Lisa. She didn't ask me again, but uh, <clears throat> I don't know. She, we're, we're too, all right, I'm gonna stop talking about that. So, uh, I didn't like the holiday otherwise. Did you guys, anybody here do anything fun holiday? Anybody go visit and come back already? Yeah? Where'd you go? Went to Boston, I'm from Boston. Nice, all right, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Bean Town, baby! Yeah. Fuck Jeter, right? Yeah. Hell yeah, I don't know, that's all I got. That's all I got for Boston. Motherfucking bean pies, right? Is that a food that they make? It is, right? They wear bow ties. They wear bow ties, fucking... John, Re uh, Paul Revere was in Boston. <laughs> was that, was that, anyway. Uh, how was it? Did you, did you go for Christmas? Yeah, I for Christmas. All right. Yeah, Hell good. yeah. The, the real holiday. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know how long I keep that sneer up. Uh, this is great. Was Hanukkah like Greeks fucking up Jews? Is that right? Didn't we like... Was that the thing? Yeah, we should do yeah. something where I fuck you up like it's a joke, Adam. <laughs> where I beat you up for Hanukkah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how was it? Do you like it? Do you like your family? They're all right. They're all right. We we've made peace. Oh, what happened? What making peace? Oh, you 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 kind of threw that on them. You're like, yeah, they're all right. It's like fucking. You burned two houses down, and all of a sudden you're the piece of shit. You know what I mean? All I did was fucking play with magic. Anyway, uh, what did you do? Why did why were you a shithead? Oh, I don't know. I was just like you know, really selfish. I'm a selfish boy. You're all over the place here. Selfish boy? Like, what did you do? Did you steal your dad's pension for, for Pokemon cards? That would be, that'd be tight, actually. Dad, I need this Charizard. You know what I mean? I see the way you eat cheeseburgers. What's the, what are the odds you're going to make it to 65? Uh, it would be cool. Anyway, so I would like it if my dad died early, right? Because that's like a chill retirement plan. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to... He's not a good dad, by the way, everyone. Relax. <laughs> he was not that cool of a dad. We did troll him, though. It was pretty fun. My brother, we were just all sitting around making very strained conversation. And he just... Uh, my brother pulled up Google Voice, or Google Translate, and put Alexander the Great was gay into it and played it in Greek. And my dad was so fucking mad. He was like, who said that? He didn't know what Google Translate was. He had no idea. He thought some woman on the internet was slandering Alexander the Great. And he was like, I'm gonna fucking get to the bottom of this. I'm an unsuccessful Greek man 4,000 years later or whatever. And I am taking offense to this. It is funny, Greek, being a Greek person is hilarious. My dad fucking, every time I'm like, you know, dad, we're not that cool. Like we fucking, he's like, oh yeah, ancient Greece, right? That's always his go-to. He's like, ancient Greece, boom, right? It's like, that happened a long time ago, right? We've been resting on those laurels for a while. Greek people are like that guy who was cool in high school, you know, but just hasn't done shit since. Like Greece shows up to the high school reunion like, woo! What's up, nerds? <laughs> Greece is back. <laughs> hey, Germany, remember when I invented democracy? And you were so into it, we hooked up under the bleachers. And Germany's like, shut up, Greece. You haven't done shit for 2,000 years. And then Greece's like, oh yeah? Guess you haven't been following the yogurt game. Because <laughs> I am killing that shit right now. Huh? That's all we have is dairy. That's what we've been reduced to. Dairy and gyros, right? Gyros, do you like bologna? Do you wish it was burned? <laughs> Gyros, that's it, that's all it is. I don't know why that's our fucking... It sucks, I hate being Greek, but... Uh, what are you gonna do? It's a useless language. It's like some words, we use part of it. That's worse than not being useful. Do you know what I mean? I don't have a bit, but it just, it feels like it's worse, you know? Somehow. <laughs> It's like my shirt, it says, fuck cost. Huh? Pretty good, huh? I'm just proud of the shirt. It was a Christmas present I got. It's barely a pun. It's just the word fuck in a brand name. And the alligators are fucking. So, what else? I feel like I did have a joke I wanted to say, but I've lived, that was all, it was just me because uh, Lisa flustered me so much about the coming. So, I haven't even gotten into my jokes. Um... I don't know. I guess I should talk about dating stuff. You, you used, you're just a Tinder vacay? 
Never in real life? No. No? Anybody here? Tinder real life? Yeah? yeah? How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Deafening silence. Is it any, does anybody fuck off Tinder? It's happened. It's happened? Yeah? yeah. yeah. You? All right. All right. You, were, you, were, you played it cool. Once? Yeah. Get out of here. Nina. Nina? I don't even know her name, dude. <laughs> you don't have to dox this girl. Just because... <laughs> Since I asked a very open-ended question. How did, how did you and Nina meet? You were wearing a fur coat earlier, weren't you? Great look. Hell yeah, dude. Um, I fuck with that, honestly. I'm not even going to shit on him. I should, but it's fucking tight that he's wearing a fur coat. Uh, Nina, huh? I feel like you fuck just in the, in the wild, though. You know what I mean? You got, you got a little gymnast body, you know what I'm saying? Do a little pull-up or two. Huh? No? Are you kidding me? If, okay, you cross your legs in a way where I believe you. You're like, that's, that's not the way a man who fucks crosses his legs. Or you fuck a lot, you know what I mean? That's like, I don't care at all what you think of me, so I'm gonna just cross my legs like a 80-year-old French woman. Um, you don't fuck? That's crazy. If we, did like a, if we did like a Freaky Friday body switch, it would be done. You would have every venereal disease there is. <laughs> Fuck. I guess no personality? What's the problem? Do you know what I'm saying? No, I do have sex often. I just had sex with Nina. Like... <laughs> Stop saying her name! All right? This is a legal issue. So you do fuck and you were lying to me, right? Is that what's going on? Yeah. Okay, well, why'd you lie to me, buddy? That's no way to be. I thought we were fucking... Because you felt bad. Is this... You don't think I can handle that you fuck? You don't think I know that you fuck? I, fu I fucked my ex-girlfriend. Were you listening at the beginning? I've, I fucked recently, my friend. Huh? She <laughs> All right, so you, you don't fuck that. You are literally what Lisa was talking about. Yeah, did she suck your dick, bro? <laughs> she did. We had sex. I don't, yo, that was tight. Did you guys fuck? Did you, like, put your penis in her vagina? Yeah, bro. Like, my thing with sex is, like, I put my dick in a pussy. Like, that's my move when I fuck. Not a lot of people think of that. <laughs> just to put it in. Put it in and then just out and then in it just a bunch of times. And then I come. Um... <laughs> she did, actually. Um, thank you, buddy. I don't know what our relationship is. I can't feel it out at all. Um, what was I talking about? I should go soon, but... Um, so you fuck off Tinder. You fucked Nina recently. Sorry, fuck. Um, was this your first foray into Tinder? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, so you immediately downloaded the app and you... Was that the first woman you swiped right on? Within how many? <laughs> okay, you have to go. Can we see this man out, this beautiful little man with his gold chain? I'm jealous of him. We got a Freaky Friday body switch this motherfucker. I want to get in there. What's up, Nina? Ew. It's me, the guy you fucked. I don't know your name, so I'm just gonna be like, Nina, remember me, the guy you fucked? I'm back, baby. And this time, I want to talk about The Simpsons. <laughs> so I'm like... Time. We're, talk we're doing a Larry Sanders show marathon, my bitch. I don't know whatever dumb shit you and me were talking about before, but that's over now. I don't know what kind of dumb hot person shit we were discussing. Crystals, I think, or something. Well, not anymore, bitch. <laughs> All right, I gotta get out of here soon, I think. Um, yeah, um, fuck, that's it, I think. Um, who's next? Oh, hell yeah. All right, well, guys, thank you. That's my time, huh, Jeff Fun, huh? All right. Okay, the rest of the show is just gonna be, it's just gonna be other beautiful plus-size gentlemen. Uh, coming up next, a good buddy of mine, please, big round of applause for Alexis Guerreros, everybody. What's up, everybody? Uh, both of us on stage at the same time, if anyone's into big dudes. That was your moment right there. That was it. That was when you came. Uh, I, uh, I lost, in the last three months, I lost four pounds, I know, because I had to go to the doctor. But right before I went, my wife was like, you look like you might have gained a few pounds, you know? 
I went, I texted her, I was like, baby girl, I lost four pounds. She wrote back, fuck you. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> She's like, I have to stop eating for a year to do that. I was like, yeah, I actually ate more. I don't know how I did it. Uh, it's just part of being a guy, I guess. I don't know, my doctor told me my blood pressure's up. You know how she told me? She's like, well, you finally did it. Your blood pressure's up. <laughs> Would you win an office pool? Why the fuck did you say it that way? <laughs> She's like, I don't know. She's like, I've been your doctor for 10 years. You know, you've always been, but your numbers have always been. I was like, did you just call me a fat fuck with your hands? <laughs> I respect you. <laughs> she was like, what do you want? Uh, she's like, you know, you've got to start like losing weight. And I was like, all right, well, that's when you tell me how to do that. Because clearly I don't know how to do that myself. <laughs> she's like, I don't know. She's like, maybe start eating things with less salt. I was like, why would I do that? <laughs> she's like, it doesn't taste good. She's like, well, some things you're going to eat aren't going to taste good. I'm like, I don't like this so far. <laughs> I was like, what happens if I don't do that? She's like, you might die. I'm like, what happens if I do eat healthier? She's like, you'll die later. I was like, well, if the movie sucks, you shut it off early, right? So, <laughs> fuck it. Let me just keep doing what I'm doing, I guess. Can I put salt on this conversation? Because it sucks. She's like, why don't you eat a salad? I was like, I'm sorry, I blacked out. What did you just say? <laughs> I'm not doing that. My wife's like, eat kale. Ugh. <laughs> kale. <laughs> Do you guys ever smell kale? <laughs> That's the smell nature put in shit so you don't eat it. You know? It's disgusting. I feel like there's a lot of kale eaters here. You guys are like, don't, talk, don't talk about my Wednesday lunch. Sorry. It's just I remember kale when I was young. All it did was hold up shrimp at buffets. You know? It had a job. It did a good job. I don't know when we decided to start eating it. But I'm like, look, it's doing its thing. Sometimes it holds up watermelon. It's doing a great job. You know? Starting to learn new tricks. Come on, good job, kale. <laughs> then my wife's like, have this smoothie. I'm like, oh, why is it green? It tastes like garbage. She's like, oh, there's kale in it. I'm like, why are we eating punishment? We're not Irish. <laughs> yeah. We're not guilty about anything. I don't know. She's a good person, though. She's a nurse. Do we have any nurses in the room? No? All graphic designers? Cool. <laughs> yeah. We need more of you guys. Uh, <laughs> she's... Nurses are cool, right? Everyone has like a lot of nice things to say about nurses, except my one friend when I told him I married a nurse. He's like, whoa, you married one of those sexy nurses, huh? One of those real sexy nurses. I was like, actually, I married a woman, not a Halloween costume. <laughs> you know, she's a real fucking person. <laughs> also, there's nothing sexy about being married to a nurse. I don't know where that comes from. People think like my wife walks around in like shorts, short skirts and high heels at work. I'm like, it's not the fucking 50s, you know? <laughs> People think she comes home and I'm like, hey babe, how's your day? She's like, don't worry about me, let me give you a sponge bath. No, <laughs> it's not like that at all. It's not like being married to some sex kid. It's like being married to a war vet. <laughs> she comes home from work, I'm like, hey babe, how's your day? She's like, I don't want to fucking talk about it. <laughs> there was blood in Filipinos everywhere. I'm like, okay. Oh, so whiskey waiting for you on the table, Colonel. <laughs> you can't. You can't even dirty talk a nurse. They say shit about their day that you can't even relate to. I'm like, seriously, babe, what happened today? She's like, I pumped a man's heart with my bare hands. I'm like, oh my God, did you wash them? <laughs> Why are you touching the couch, you know? <laughs> I have nothing to relate that to, pumping a man's heart with your bare hands. What am I gonna say? I was like, oh, I tried to get a strong Capri Sun the other day. Like, Is that the same thing, maybe? We both got red everywhere. Uh, <laughs> we both ruined the couch, I'm sorry. You can't, you can't dirty talk. I tried to dirty talk my wife the other night. I was laying in bed because my stomach hurt. She came over, she covered me with a blanket. She grabbed my face all soft. I was like, look at you, your sexy ass bedside manner. I was like, you're my sexy little nurse. I was like, no, 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 you know who you are? You're my dirty little nurse. Wait, 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 wait. You know who you are? You're my little wet nurse. Yeah. <laughs> she looked at me and she's like, I don't think you know what a wet nurse is. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, it's definitely not what you think it is. She looked at me and she's like, Alexis, a wet nurse is someone who's hired to breastfeed. <laughs> yeah, I knew what it was. <laughs> it's just what I'm into. <laughs> she's cool. She, uh, she likes to work out. She, does, uh, she has like a lot of yoga pants. You know? Do you guys know what yoga pants are? You know? She has yoga pants, but she doesn't do yoga. You know? <laughs> she has like 30,000 pairs of yoga pants. I've never once seen her even tie her shoes. You know? <laughs> I'm like, yo. I was like, why the fuck you got all these yoga pants? You don't even do yoga. I'm like, making fun of her. I'm like, you got all these fucking yoga pants. You don't even do yoga. She looked at me. She's like, motherfucker, you're wearing basketball shorts. <laughs> Good point. Good point. She, uh, I have one of these faces where you look at me, you don't know what I am, you know? I get that a lot. I get, like, Italian a lot. You know, did you think Italian? 
I get that a lot. Yeah, I get, I'm not, but I get that a lot, you know? I don't know if it's the hair or this fucking deli owner accent that I have. <laughs> you know, it sounds like the last word out of my mouth is probably gonna be provolone. <laughs> also, when I say provolone, like I'm from around here, when I say provolone, it's like sexy, you know? Like when Stav says provolone, it's probably sexy. You know, where are you from, dude? Uh, Long Island. Long Island, all right. Say provolone. Provolone. Right? It's not that bad, you know? <laughs> Right here, where are you from? New Jersey. New Jersey. Give me someone who's not from fucking around here. Where are you from? Milwaukee. Milwaukee, here we go. Huh? Say provolone. Provolone. Ugh, right? <laughs> Ugh, it's cheese is from your state. Ugh. <laughs> Get that out of my sandwich as soon as you said it. These two people lost their erections. It's disgusting. <laughs> I say it, it sounds like one of those light FM letters. You remember that? Like you were listening to the radio and the song would end and the DJ would come on and be like, hey, Stacy, Dan wrote us to tell you he loves you and he misses you. Provolone. <laughs> You're like, I think they're getting back together. Also, I'm very hungry. What is that? I'm not Italian. I get Puerto Rican a lot. I think it's just because I'm from around here. I'm not. The third one this is the one I get the most. I get a retired cop that opened his own bakery. <laughs> guys are assholes. Uh, <laughs> left too hard at that. I'll tell you what I am. My mom is from Cuba. My dad is from Uruguay, which is in South America. My wife, she's the Italian one. I said that once in a show. I said, I'm half Cuban, half Uruguayan. I said, my wife's Italian. As soon as I said my wife's Italian, some lady in the front row goes, ooh, exotic. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, did you hear what I said about myself? You know? And then I realized that lady was from Europe. So when I said my wife's Italian, she thought I meant Italy. Nah, I meant New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, it's not exotic, all right? That's like the least amount of exotic as possible. Like that lady pictured my wife somewhere in Italy on a gondola, like, is it each? <laughs> you know? The reality is more like her in a bagel shop going, what the fuck you mean you ran out of everything bagel? <laughs> That's <how> she speaks. <laughs> Like, her family's exactly what you think about when you think of Italian New Jersey. <laughs> like, New Jersey's from, uh, New Jersey's from, whatever the fuck, you know what I mean. <laughs> I was just there this weekend. I'm like, they still act the same way. They act like a bunch of extras from the show Sopranos that never heard the director yell, cut, you know? <laughs> You're like, we're still doing this? This is cool. Like, <laughs> like, her uncles, no one knows what any of them do for a living, but they always have tons of cash in their pockets. They wear pinky rings, you know? <laughs> They say whatever they want at family events and no one says anything back to them because everyone's so scared of them. We'll be at a family event in the back of the room you hear, when the fuck is this over? This is fucking boring. <laughs> Guys, we're at a funeral. Could you keep it down a little bit? It's a dead body in the front of the room. And I'm pretty sure you had something to do with it. Uh, <laughs> that body's got pinky ring marks all over his neck. Like her one Uncle Vinny, he's like the toughest one. Like no one talks to him because they're so afraid of him. He talks to me though. I'm like, dude, I'm afraid of you too. <laughs> I'm like, what do you want? He's like, I hear you're doing stand-up. I was like, right now I'm peeing myself, but most of the time stand-up, yeah. He's like, I'm coming to see you perform. I'm like, why did that sound like a threat? <laughs> it's like, dude, I don't think you used the right tone. He's like, you want to talk to tone? I was like, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> I was like, Vinny, when are you coming? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna be comfortable every time I'm on stage looking in the shadows for some guy in a track suit. <laughs> You guys can relax, it came last week, by the way. At the end of the night, at the end of the show, I walked up to him, I was like, hey, Vinny, did you have a good time? He goes, yeah, fucking comedy, eh? That's all he said. I was like, dude, I don't know if what you just said is good or bad. I was like, but I feel like I owe you money, do I? Because I will go in my wife's purse and get you as much as you want. She's a nurse, she has a good job. I was like, Vinny, yes or no, did you have a good time? He's like, yeah, 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 you were funny and everything, but, uh, I thought you told me your comedy was about honesty, huh? I was like, yeah, everything I said is true. He goes, yeah? How come I didn't hear you do any jokes about how much you love to suck dick? <laughs> like, you do know I'm married to your niece, right? <laughs> Can't I just give you money? Wouldn't that be easier? I make fun of her because she's from Jersey. I'm actually from Jersey too, but I'm like different. I'm from Newark, New Jersey. I don't know if you guys have ever purchased heroin before. <laughs> Clearly, uh, <laughs> tough place, all right? I grew up without a dad, obviously. I'm a Latin kid from Newark. None of us had dads, okay? There was no dads in Newark. That's why we all used to watch Full House. It's like fantasy TV for us. There's three dads on that show, okay? <laughs> There's one in the living room, one's in the kitchen, one's upstairs. Every fucking door you open in this house, is a dad? Is that where they all are? Can one of you come home, you know? <laughs> Like, we all used to love that show. I made one friend in New York who also grew up without a father for a totally different reason. His father was a firefighter who died during the attacks of 9-11. I didn't know that. When he told me that, it really touched me, you know? 
Like, he told me when he turned 18, he received over a million dollars. He said he'd give it all back to spend one more day with his dad. It, like, really affected me. You know, it got me thinking, like, if I could go back in time and change the course of life for just one person, I'd go back and convince my father to become a firefighter. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys are awesome. My name is Alexis Guerrero. Let's keep it going. Keep it going for Alexis, huh? Everybody, the guys, this has been a great show. Post uh, the holiday, thanks for coming out. I was kind of hoping uh, that the batteries were low on the recorder, and I was hoping that they would die before I had to go up. Uh, because I have zero confidence um, in my... I kind of quit stand-up comedy. And, well, everything. I quit everything to get really into uh, woodworking and PlayStation. <laughs> for the last, like, six or seven months, um, which doesn't, you know... I mean, I still have all my fingers, so I guess that's a success in woodworking. Um, it hasn't added anything to my life other than now I have... I didn't realize how powerful it was to be able to walk into Home Depot with just complete confidence. <laughs> Do you understand what that's like? To be able to fucking go in there and not feel like a dumb... Because, first of all, everyone they hire at Home Depot is just somebody with, like, a nail and hammer autism. They don't have any kind of social skills. Everyone who works at Home Depot is like, hey, how you doing? Is there any way I can make you feel like a complete piece of shit today? Like a fucking abject retard? I can, I can help you with that if you want. Oh, you're looking for something? I don't handle that. that I mostly just uh, condescend to people and, uh, and slowly go bald. Uh, I've been balding somehow for 78 years, and I'm still hanging on. I've got one hair that wraps around the entirety of my head. And then somehow connects to my forearms. I don't know why I look like an Amish troll, but uh, they hired me. Um, but yeah, it's great. But it's still, they still fuck with me. Because even, there's no real way to get like perfect Home Depot results, but I can get pretty far. I'll walk in there and I'm like, yeah, I need, uh, I need drywall screws, number eight. Okay, coarse thread. And then he's like, okay. Panhead or wafer head? I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> How fucking dare you ask me that question? I spent over $8,000 on tools this year. I still don't have health insurance. I fucking... I don't know. Now we're going to lose the ACA? I was kind of... That was a failure for me. Was anyone else excited about the ACA? And then you went online and you're like, I'm finally going to have health care. And then you saw how much it costs. And you're like, okay, well, I guess I have to kill the president. Yeah. <laughs> I have to purchase a gun and go murder the president. Because he did this to me. I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, like, since the election, I just don't have confidence in doing jokes anymore because I spent the last two years confronting people who are like, oh, straight white men are ruining everything. And I'm like, ah, shut up. Now I'm like, oopsie daisy. <laughs> I'll just uh, be over here. <laughs> Minding my own business, I guess. It's kind of my fault. Everything's about to be terrible. Um, the most annoying thing is all the comics on Facebook. They're like, well, this is going to be great for comedy. It's like, is it? Uh, first of all, that's pretty fucking selfish. That's, that's a horrible outlook to have. But uh, I don't think we needed that. Like, Tinder was pretty good for stand-up comedy. I don't think that this is going to be... We need xenophobia to help comedy. It's going to be... Actually, you know what I was thinking about, though? Is like, okay, so if they do start executing people, which they will, they're going to they're gonna start killing people, public figures, I feel like I'm going to be on board with the first, like, 11 executions, right? Because they're going to feed Lena Dunham to rats, right? That's going to happen immediately. I'll support that. That'd be great. He's probably going to kill Trevor Noah, I think. And then John gets his job back. So that, that's how it'll be good for comedy, is they kill Trevor Noah. <laughs> No. And we'll continue being complacent. Shit will just get worse. Right? That's like, you know, it's funny. They will start executing people, and then like 10, 11, 15 in, you're going to be like, all right, I guess that's just, you know, that's replaced football. So <laughs> just sit on your couch and be like, wow, thanks for joining us. Uh, good morning, everybody. We're here live at the execution of Hillary Clinton on the National Mall. <laughs> And if you miss Bruno Mars's set earlier, it's going to be on our website in its entirety. You know, I just love him, Kathy Lee. He's so great. That will be the future. Um, everybody's concerned about the war on Christmas, huh? 
That's raging on. 15 years. We're still in the war on Christmas. Didn't think it would go this far. I just love that the, the fucking main battleground for the war on Christmas now is just Starbucks. That's where it wound up, and it has nothing to do with Christmas anymore. It's like, you better write Trump on the cup, or I'll bring my fucking concealed carry in here. And that's what it turned into. Nobody talks about the real war on the holidays. Uh, the war on Kwanzaa, right? That's a... They kind of lost that one a long time ago. Yeah, that's right. All holidays matter, especially fucking Kwanzaa. They, just, they like gave up. Like 20 years ago, they were like, just keep putting more A's in there. That'll work. Just that. It'll be like K-W-A-A-A-A. -A -A -A. If there's enough A's, people will notice it. That's our method. I think the problem with Kwanzaa is that it's, it's like a branding issue, right? Because they made a couple of smart moves. You know, it's the same time as Hanukkah and Christmas. You got to do that so you can consolidate all the presents. It's 20 days long, which combines the 12 of Christmas and the 8 of Hanukkah. It's a, a little bit, you know, extreme, but I'm on board with that. But they don't have, like, any kind of branding, right? Like, they need, like, Kwanzaa movies, Kwanzaa movies to get people interested in Kwanzaa. And so I came up with one. It's like a Christmas tale, right? But it's the Kwanzaa version. And so it's mostly the same kind of story. Like, Ebenezer is already a black enough name, so you keep that, right? <laughs> guy named Ebenezer and he just doesn't like Kwanzaa or whatever and then the ghost of Kwanzaa past comes and visits him but Kwanzaa's only been around for like 30 years so it's not even a ghost it's just an old black guy from the 70s named like Lamont and he shows up and he's like what's up Jack you don't like Kwanzaa and he's like is that Lamont is that your fucking Coupe de Ville leaking oil in my driveway and he's like come on I'm gonna take you through your life and he's like get out of my house and it's, it's the show I, uh, I'm pretty sure I have a peptic ulcer, or some kind of ulcer, I don't know. I wake up in the middle of the night with searing stomach pain every night. That's been going on for five months, and uh, I'm not doing anything about it. Uh, I tried to change my diet, and then I fucked up, and today I had lunch at GNC, which a lot of people don't even know is an option. They don't know that you can do that. I went in there, and I got one of those candy bars for assholes, is I think... <laughs> How those are classified is uh, it's like a giant candy bar with like steroids in it. I think is what it is. And I'm not talking about power bars because I think everyone's familiar with power bars. They created a new type of bar that's it's like somebody had a power bar and they're like, what the fuck? Why isn't there more power in this? This is just a bar. I don't, I'm not experiencing any kind of power with this bar. And so they took like two of them and like stacked them together and put ice cream cake in the middle. And then, I don't, if you look at the list of ingredients, it's just all the shit we won't let Iran have. It's chemicals. It's just Dave's made by Walter White. That's been an alternate. That would be a great Breaking Bad where he's like, uh, Mr. White, you have cancer. And he's like, I'm gonna do steroids and get huge. It's Breaking Bad starring Mark Wahlberg. I got cancer, but it's not gonna stop me. I'm gonna get as big as possible, and I'm gonna beat up all the Mexicans in New Mexico. It's gonna be New Boston. We're calling it New Southie. It's gonna go three episodes until I beat up the director for being Vietnamese. And that's the show. Mark Wahlberg's great. I was, <laughs> me and Adam were laughing, we were watching, uh, what's that Stephen Hawking movie? The, the Stephen, I forget the one that came out last year with Eddie Redmayne, which, by the way, he doesn't deserve an Oscar for that fucking role. At one point, he just has his glasses on, <laughs> fucked up, and it's like I've never seen Stephen Hawking not wear his glasses correctly. Who's letting that fucking professor go around looking like a, like a Dick Van Dyke bit? Oh, oh, oh. oh. That movie fucking sucked. They also, I love like the, like the montage is his like d disease is getting worse. And then like they just have like, you know, every night him dragging himself up the stairs to the bed. And it's like, yeah, they just put the bed downstairs. There's no way they made him do that every day for 20 years. He's the smartest man in the world. And you're going to fucking make him climb those stairs like that. But yeah, me and Adam are watching that movie. And we were laughing. Just to any movie, any serious movie, just imagine it with Mark Wahlberg in it. <laughs> I mean, he's like, I, I found out I'm playing Steve Jobs, the smartest scientist in the entire world, but his legs are retarded. So I figure if I'm going to be smart, I got to get as big as possible for this role. So I'm going steroids every single day. I'm eating 35 meals for breakfast alone. <laughs> He's, okay, so his story is he's the smartest guy in the world. He's from Boston. He's from Southie. 
And he got so strong that he broke his fucking legs doing squats. And now he's gonna bench press the dictionary until we can do time travel. That's how it works. <laughs> I didn't read the script. I don't know how to read. I don't, I don't know. And then at the end, he stops both 9-11 and the marathon bomb. It's an extended cut. That movie. I guess. I am trying to clean up my diet a little bit. I don't... What I want to do is I want to stop eating cereal that's like clearly meant for babies, if I can. No more baby cereal. No more fucking... No more Captain Crunch and Lucky Charms and shit. Just switch to adult cereal. But the problem is, is they don't make anything in between. Children's cereal, which is delicious, right? And then adult cereal, which is absolute shit. It's fucking all disgusting. Cashy? What the fuck is Cashy? They all have disgusting names, like muesli. That sounds disgusting. It sounds like cum that came out of your nose. Muesli. I tried asking somebody what Kashi was one time. They're like, uh, do you mean Kashi? And I'm like, fuck you. No, I don't. I don't need a cereal that thinks it's better than me. I just want to eat the cereal. Um, cash. I'm pretty sure it's just ground up pine cones covered in laxative. <laughs> For being honest. There's no discernible flavor. You know what it is? It's shredded up tax forms that you feel good about filling out because you're like, mm, I'm an adult now. And then you, you put it in your mouth. And then, like if I had Kashi with a cup of coffee, I would immediately shit my pants, right? And then I would need diapers, which is what babies wear. So who's even really the adult anymore <laughs> eating that cereal, right? Like they should change, like Cashy's slogan should be Cashy, you can't spell take a shit without Cashy. And if you think about it, not only is that correct, but it, that's actually the middle of that sentence is Cashy, which might not be particularly funny, but that does make that the smartest thing I've ever written in my entire life. So. Thank you that I've mastered literacy. Sometimes I wish I was illiterate. Do you? No. No? What do you do for a living? Uh, just graduated. So you don't need to read. You're done reading. You finished. You graduated. Just, just don't forget how to read. That would be great. You know how much easier your life would be if you didn't know how to read? Like the amount of time I spend just getting mad at shit on my phone. <laughs> On per I find things that piss me off. It's like I'll Google articles that are the exact opposite of what I think. I'm like, you fucking asshole, you piece of shit. And then my phone will die and I'll be like, I'm free. I don't, I don't need to live in this world anymore. I give a shit. Like that's what illiteracy, you remember those PSAs that used to, this is how good the economy was in the 1990s that there used to be PSAs for adult illiteracy that would come on the radio that I, I remember, and it was always like, uh, my name's Michael, I'm 42 years old, and can you imagine my embarrassment when I had to tell my wife and our two sons and my boss that I don't know how to read. And then it's like, ba -da -ba, the learning how to read, people who don't know how to read, check it out, it's a cool place. I learned how to read. You know, something, I don't know. It's like your embarrassment. You fucked somebody enough to have two kids without knowing how to read? Dude, you won. Don't learn. You fucking what? You had a job? Don't learn how to read. You're not a genius, but that's a type of genius, I think. <laughs> you have a fucking wife, and she doesn't know. Just every date was like, yeah, let's go back to that restaurant with pictures on the menu. That place was great. Yeah. No, I like that. I don't feel like reading tonight. I'm in a real pointing mood, so. <laughs> we can figure it out. <laughs> There's also, too, I remember like every, in the 90s, every mall had two different stores that somehow just sold swords and pens. <laughs> and that was like a viable business back then. It's just, oh, I'm sorry, you want the other sword and pen store. Yeah, it's not, it's on the other level. So you're in the wrong sword and pen store. <laughs> <laughs> the Franklin Mint. You remember the Franklin Mint? I like to imagine that was just the name of the man that, that started that place. This guy, Franklin Mint. They just sold, they sold like $30,000 custom chess sets and then like die-cast models of Duesenberg. It's like a store for James Bond villains' children. That's what goes there. Um, okay, I'll uh, tell you this. Uh, 
eat a lot of children's snack food, a lot of uh, children's cereal. And my favorite thing about children's cereal um, is the commercials. That's, uh, despite the flavor, the commercials are the best. Because whatever food they market towards children, whenever they introduce a new flavor, they have to introduce the flavor in the commercial with some sort of horrific workplace disaster. You remember that? That was like every ad. Every time, it was always like, there was an explosion at the Gushers factory. And you're like, what the fuck? An explosion, is everyone okay? And they're like, no, four men are dead, but chocolate and strawberry are finally together. And they're like, I don't think this should be a commercial, man. This is reunion men with families. And they're like, that's nothing. Last week, the green M&M was raped by a pretzel. And it's like, this is disgusting. I can eat this. All right, uh, you guys were a lot of fun. Uh, do we have another comic? Is Brandon here? Adam's, Adam is coming up, so keep going for Adam. We're going to just jump right in. Oh, thank you, Nick. Once again, such an enthusiastic introduction of me. Oh, he crushes it every month. He just, and now is Adam Friedland. <laughs> All right, uh, I saw something amazing. Did, did anyone witness a Christmas miracle? Okay, it wasn't a Christmas miracle, but I did see something amazing. I was at a Panda Express at lunchtime. I, was, I work in Midtown, I was at Panda Express, and there was an old Chinese man, that's weird. What's a Chinese guy doing in Panda Express, right? <laughs> that's a bastardization of your cuisine, that's crazy. Why would you be at Panda Express? And he had his phone out, and he was shazamming. He was shazamming Hey Yeah by Outkast. I was literally just walking around Panda Express like this. I was like, this is, this is the most incredible thing. This is going to happen. There's going to be three things like this in my entire life that are going to be this incredible. You really only get three things. Sometimes, some people get win the lottery. I got to see that fucking, fucking, and with a, the ch old Chinese man with a door of the Explorer hat, shazamming, hey yeah by Outkast in a Panda Express. That's all I got. That's my fucked. That's pretty much, I found uh, an eighth of weed once when I was 21 years old. That was that was two. That's two. I got one more lucky thing. Oh, actually, no. The third thing is that my friend's brother sent me weed from Oregon. Okay. I, it's pathetic that two of my most lucky things in the world are weed-related, but that's where I'm at in life. Um, he sent me weed from Oregon. I said, what's it called? He's like, I didn't give it, he didn't give it a name. I was like, I'm going to call it Death Star because it looks like circular and dense like the Death Star. And then he texted him back an hour and a half later and he said, it's called Death Star. And I literally just ran through a wall. I ran through a wall like the Kool-Aid man. I'm done. I wasted my three lucky things. It's over. I have literally nothing left. I have a cum podcast and... and, and $60,000 of student debt, which it doesn't go down. I pay every month. It's still $60,000. I literally, I graduated 47 years ago. Then I was like, that'll be $60,000. I don't get it at all. I went to a stupid college uh, for stupid kids in uh, Washington, D.C. called the, the George Washington University. Um... <laughs> It was a, basically, it's a real estate scam. <laughs> they had us living in, uh, Washington, <laughs> Washington DC has a law, you have to live on campus your first two years of college. So they charged for literally a broom closet with four boys sleeping in it, $1,500 a month each. They were getting six grand a month off of literally Harry Potter's closet. <laughs> It was a scam, it was a dumb place. It, there was a lot of rich kids, so I got a big scholarship to go. I never visited. I grew up in Las Vegas, but it sounded good. It had George in it, it sounded nice. So I was like, I'm gonna go there. It's how they gave me money. They gave me $40,000 a year. I was like, that's incredible. Unfortunately, it cost $60,000 a year, but I was like, oh God, I'm gonna be rich. I'm gonna be in DC. I'm gonna be a power player. It's gonna be incredible. And then I get there and it's all these just fail sons from the fucking, 
the tri-state area, right? With their parents, like, and they were like, oh, do you go clubbing? And I was like, I'm a boy. Why would I go clubbing? And they were like, I've been clubbing. The New York City kids were like, oh, I've been clubbing since I was like 11 years old. I go to clubs. So I remember I went to a club with, with my friends and one of them had his parents' American Express black card, all right? He gave a boy an 11, <laughs> the same credit card that Jay-Z has, right? No limit, all right? And, he <laughs> and literally we get in the club and it's in a club full of adults and then just they get, bring us to a private table, right? And we got a bottle of uh, Grey Goose and we're pouring out drinks and we're all underage and we're just standing on the couches dancing to fucking whatever bullshit, bullshit song there was. And uh, I just felt so bad for everyone else at that club. Like who, but like they were just like at the club, right? Having an adult time and then they just see like a Chuck E. Cheese section. <laughs> in the corner of children, just children, <laughs> dancing on couches. I was like, this shouldn't be happening. This should not be happening. And thankfully, a lot of their parents were wiped out in the 2008 financial year. <laughs> anyway, so it's good. It's good. I think the economy should fail. Occupy. Okay, so... Um, it was a stupid place to go to college. I'm still paying. I'm going to be paying for it forever. Patreon.com. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, I uh, saw... Uh, did you guys have a good uh, Chris Christmas? Did you do that? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I've stayed... I, I hated Christmas growing up. I would... Because uh, there was nothing to do. My parents would refuse to accept that everyone else was having a holiday. They'd be like, here's cereal. And I'd be like, oh, fuck you guys. Like, this sucks. And so uh, then I moved to New York three years ago, and uh, to be Jewish in Christmas, guys, what a delight here. Uh, what, a, what a freaking delight. You could go uh, have the Chinese food. There's a lot of us that are walking around. This is basically Israel. We live in Israel right now, and we're not, uh, we're not brut brutalizing uh, poor people. Um, uh, anyway... I saw uh, the, the, the Star, Star Wars movie. Did you guys see that? Okay, clap if you saw that. Okay, cool. Did anyone not see the Star Wars movie? Here? Okay, so, uh, spoiler, Darth Vader's in it. Fuck you, okay? If you care about spoilers, you can suck my dick. I don't care. Um, Darth Vader's in it, and uh, guess what, folks? He brings back the... You know, and the guy is choking. He brings back the choke move. Um... I was just thinking, how funny would it be if Darth Vader was in a meeting with all the other bad guys in the Star Wars? It was a stupid movie, by the way, guys. It was long. I fell asleep. It might have been good. I fell asleep. Um, anyway, so uh, how good would it be if Darth Vader was in a meeting and someone was like, hey, Darth, have you seen uh, Jerry? And he's like, oh, fuck Jerry, dude. I hate that guy. And then everyone at the meeting was like, whoa! <laughs> For the listener at home, I did a jerk-off motion, and then Darth made everyone come. You know, that's the joke, is that Darth Vader used the Sith uh, choke move to ch choke men's dicks. It's a very, it's a very deep joke. It's about uh, society. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, yeah, that movie was, was really stupid, um, and... Uh, whatever, that's all I got is that uh, the five minutes I was awake was the joke and then I was like, oh, what if he jerked a man off that way? That'd be cool. <laughs> all right, $13 worth it. Okay, cool, I got one joke out of that. Um, what else? Uh, nothing much. My, my, life has, my life has been <laughs> shitty. One of the only, uh, one of the only uh, remarkable things that's happened to me is that uh, uh, that two women picked me up to do sex stuff with me uh, at a place. Yeah, I never, listen, I never planned it. I, I, I've i been with girls that have been like, oh, let's have a threesome. And then they like, we never came together. They, we'd go, th they'd get a Tinder and then we'd go through it and then I'd be like, what about that one? And she's like, what, what, what is, what's good about that one? You know, and I'd be like, I'd get in trouble, and then I'd be like, oh, threesome's off. I hate you. Uh, stop it. Um, but these two girls did uh, sex stuff. It was very bad. Anyway, okay, 
point of the story, I'm not gonna explain it, but I had a panic attack in the middle of it, and I, I hid, I hid, because, of, okay, so when you're doing sex, the, the thing about sex is that it's like yoga, right? That's so lame, okay. <laughs> This is really lame, but okay, so when, I've done yoga three times in my life, okay? And I've complained about it, but uh, girls have made me do it. And uh, when I'm doing it, I'm like, oh, this is so stupid. I'm gonna go to stretchy class and do stretches with people. This is fucking dumb. And then I go do it, and then I realize that you're focusing on the stupid uh, uh, karate stretches, and then you forget about everything else that bothers you because you're just focused on whatever, right? On that shit. Okay, so, so it's nice because like everything you hate about yourself, you stop thinking about for an hour. And that's kind of like what sex is for me, right? It's like, okay, I'm gonna do this, actually, when you think about it, pretty disgusting and weird thing, but I normally want to kill myself, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this 10 minutes to not think about killing myself by, by uh, asking to eat a pussy way too early. Um, way too, just a peck and then a, can I please? Okay, anyway. Uh, anyway, so the, the, the point of the threesome thing is, uh, it was, it was it, when you're doing something with one person, it's fine, you can forget about all the stuff that bothers you, but then when there's another lady sitting there, you know, what, what, what can you do to her? You know, you're doing something to one person. Really, the most you can do is just honk a boob. That's, that's really all you can do. You know, you can't just you do a little honk and then you feel bad that you're really attracted to one of them and not the other one. And then you don't want the other one to find out that you're not attracted to her, so you overcompensate and do more stuff with the one you don't like. And then it's just, then you have a panic attack. Okay, so that's what a threesome is. If you haven't had one, that's just what happens for every guy. It's very normal, okay? That's just what happens. It's, it happens to every guy. Um, so uh, the funny part about it was the next day, I woke up and I had a cold, okay? I got a cold from group sex, <laughs> which is my immune system literally telling me that I am too Jewish. <laughs> to have uh, uh, sex with more than one person. There's just so many assholes and vaginas and mouths. It's just orifices and just fucking germs just flying around. I can't do it, folks. Uh, I got a, I got a, anyway, they were making fun of me earlier for dating Asian women. It's, I, I've, I dated two K Korean girls in a row and then everyone looked at me and they were like oh you're a fucking fetishist you're a f that's what you are you're a fetishist and uh i was dating this girl and uh she saw a text message i got a text from a friend and she said oh like we're hanging out at this bar bring your new korean pretty fucked up weird text right i was like that's weird that my friend kelly would say that to me over text and she's like is that what i am am i just some fucking uh, and I was like, no, people are objectifying, people, people are, are saying that I'm a weirdo. They're, not the, they're saying that I'm this guy that only dates one kind of woman. That's very strange. And it's, they say it about Jewish guys. It's very weird. I feel weirded out by it, right? And we got in this whole fight. And then we got to her apartment. And I went into her room. And uh, right next to her bed, she had a picture of Larry David and Woody Allen. <laughs> So I'm, I'm the objectified, right? I'm the target, that's right. It's crazy, like I can't have sex anywhere else in the world other than here in New York. My friend, I was talking to my friend about it and he said that it's because there are enough girls here in New York that have seen the movie Annie Hall that think it's acceptable to have sex with with this with this. <laughs> right <laughs> so what i'm saying is not guilty <laughs> he did it thank you woody okay uh guys this set was better at the beginning but anyway we have one final act this young man is a good friend of ours um he's uh he fell asleep but now he's here is brandon here I'm 
Oh, fuck off, dude. Okay, Brandon <laughs> fell asleep. Now he came la- to, so he could be last and to be a, a diva. But I want, I want you guys to, be, uh, to pay, to pay uh, attention, to give him your laughs, and to give him your love because he's a treasure. Um, he is uh, Spencer Pratt from The Hills' favorite comedian. Um, if that's not an endorsement... <laughs> Man, I don't know what is. Uh, everyone, please put your hands together for Mr. Brandon Wardell. All right, my name's Brandon Wardell. Thanks, bye. Well, that's the show, folks. All right, Twitter personality Brandon Wardell, everyone. Wow. I can't believe he's trying stand-up. That's so nice. Um, <laughs> uh, man, should we just shit on Brandon for the next half hour? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, no, he's our friend. We love him. As to you two, we'll do it on the podcast. Uh, listen to the premium apps for us shitting on our good friend Brandon. Yeah, all premium apps are uh, only us talking about Brandon. And, uh, <laughs> the only way he'll ever we know, know that he's is too he cheap. For it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we know he's too to cheap it. to pay five dollars. So. Uh, that's how he's got to he's got to spend that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He subscribe to Chopper. Fuck off, Brandon. You're not smart, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> we know you're dumb as shit, um, motherfucker. I'm getting into you don't like, know politics. I'm getting into like the news lately. <laughs> Yo, have you heard about the news? <laughs> it's fucking sick. <laughs> God damn, how terrible was that Ariana Grande thing, huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ, embarrassing, Brandon. Um, don't say that out loud. You know that's for Twitter and Twitter alone. Um, no, he's a friend and I love him. Um, you guys didn't watch his set, so I'm just out here shitting on him for that one, and I feel like an asshole. Yeah, I why? Well, I, I, I don't know if he did good or bad. If he did no, bad, he did good. He had oh, a good okay. set. Then yeah, uh, fine, but he did, told a horrific joke in the middle of it. Uh, <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, I really could see me on this island. When well, you said it. that Ariana Grande thing, I'm like, yeah, that could be any one of his jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do his whole chunk. He just has 40 minutes on each Disney show. <laughs> his iCarly bit. Do you have? You have to have. I, I, know Ar- I, bit stuff. I know, but we have. What about know. dog? With hold, dog? On, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold <laughs> on. He said that defensively, like he didn't used to fucking subscribe to every Reddit fucking uh, Disney. Remember when he used to beat off to the uh, the yeah, demi? Tell, tell him every subreddit I used to jack off. <laughs> yeah, he had some good ones, but not right now. Like I said, for the uh, premiums. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um what was the other one? No, there was a good one. I Carly Brandon, had... Brandon and I, uh, when Brandon, w- Brandon was a child doing stand-up <laughs> with us, he was like 17, and we were all adults. And now he he's like... an adult, and he's 17. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we were like friends with him. It was very impressive he was hanging out with adults as a child. But uh, we, he, uh, I was in a meeting The moral of the story, guys, is that being precocious is fucking worthless. <laughs> <laughs> just, you wind up doing nothing with your life, mostly. <laughs> You just have to remember the time that adults hung out with you. Anyway, he, uh, without my permission, bought us like $180 tickets to go see Drake. <laughs> <laughs> so I was 25 and he was 17 or something. And I went with my child friend to see Drake. <laughs> and it was just us... <laughs> It was just us and a million 17-year-old girls shouting the N-word. <laughs> shouting. Just every lyric. Perfect. Perfect. And I remember there was like these, uh, there were these, these slutty little teen girls in front of us, and one of them just started... Slow down. One of them, one of them just... I'm that guy. Just anyway. started rub- I'm hard that you said the word slow. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. Anyway, one of them started twer- twerking on my on my peen, and I, and I was like, nay. Wow, you, you became the bad guy in this story pretty fucking quick. Yeah. No. <laughs> no, no, guys, you're, you're not, not Brandon's cutting me off. Shit, so I was Stop cutting me off. <laughs> I was having sex with one of Brandon's four-year-old friends. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that guy sucks. In my opinion. In my adult opinion. <laughs> 
Well, there was a good punchline there. Go ahead. No, there's, yeah, it'll work now. Here. Hey, we're supporting you, dude. No, it's we're being no, supportive. Adam, do it, bitch. Okay, so they, they're all, the children The children started to put their butts on my penis. And I pulled away. And I was behind you with my child friend. And I said, you, you would have been so mean to me in high school. And I was like, how about this guy? And then they t- turned around. And now Brandon's, <laughs> now Brandon's famous. So that's... Now Brandon can fuck any teen he wants. Yeah. yeah. yeah and he true. does. Yeah. Uh, so they, they could have been on that gravy train over there. But uh, instead they chose a, a 25-year-old paralegal. <laughs> so that's just... Pretty... Not anymore once they hear that story. Yeah. They're going to take your not license away. Yeah. Paralegal true. Away. I, there's no license. Yeah. It's, okay. Well, that really... Damn. We were funnier. looking for a shebang, you know, yeah, like there was a nice no shebang. End. Yeah, it was real, okay. <laughs> but the, the story was you at 25 were more fuckable than Brandon at 17. That, well, was, the, that was the moral of the story. <laughs> yeah, and now Brandon is, uh, is, is uh, more fuckable than, uh, than God. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> That's what you go with? He's more fuckable than God? I'm, I'm Just say he's more fuckable than you. No, he's not. <laughs> so you're more fuckable than God? Is God fuckable? Does God <laughs> fuck? I don't yeah, know. why I've is seen God pictures fuckable? of God. God doesn't seem like a pretty... He looks like Santa. He fucks... He looks like he's homeless buff, Santa. No, he's buff Santa, dude. Oh, God is buff really Santa. Buff yeah, Santa. Yeah, yeah. Remember the 90s when all those movies, like, the big thing was like, yeah, I'll ask God if I ever meet her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, don't smoke cigarettes, by the way. They're bad for you. Hollywood, 1995. Let's get rid of the death penalty, guys. All right, well, that's our show, guys. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. fun? Yeah. 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 When are we back? We are back the fourth Monday of uh, January. All right, maybe. last Monday, January, right? Yeah, yeah. maybe. Fourth there Monday, January. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, anyway, whatever. Just fucking look it up. Um, Thanks, thank you guys coming. so much. That's our Bye. Show. See you next month. See ya. Woo!